Welcome to the District 5-5A District opener on the Rev game of the week. Tonight, the Santa Ma Gators are on the road at Spartan Stadium for the matchup with the East Ascension Spartans, the biggest rivalry here in Ascension Parish, the game that some people are billing the battle on Burnside. I'm Jeff Porsche and I'll be joined by the coach David Swacker in just a moment. But right now we're going to throw it to the field for our third member of the broadcast team, Troy LaBeouf. Hello everybody, this is Troy LaBeouf down on the field at Spartan Stadium for this epic battle between East Ascension and Santa Mar. I got the Spartan cheerleaders with me right here. How about it, girls? They are fired up. The stands are packed. It's going to be a good one tonight. This series is 22 to 21. East Ascension leads this series. Glenn Darcy's going to be here tonight. We're going to have him on at halftime. You don't want to go anywhere. The pregame show will continue to roll on. Things I'll be looking for tonight. Obviously, East Ascension's line averages about 288 across the front against this Santa Mar defensive line who does well in the trenches. It's going to be a battle in the trenches. That's where the game is going to be won tonight. It should be a good one. We're, it's the battle on Burnside. We're live inside Spartan Stadium. Don't go anywhere. It's the Rev Game of the Week. Looking for an extraordinary education opportunity? Introducing Ascension Public School's Early College Option Program, where you can earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree from River Parish's Community College at the same time. Experience the best of both worlds as high schools seamlessly blend with college coursework in a rigorous yet supportive program. Yet stay connected to your home high school through clubs, organizations, and sports. And here's the best part. Students pay no tuition or textbook costs. Ascension Public School's Early College Option Program, where your future begins today. Lamar Dixon's role from an entertainment standpoint is to be an economic engine for South Louisiana and Ascension Parish. To create an environment that people don't have to really leave their home in South Louisiana to have a world-class entertainment value. The partnership between Lamar and Rev has been a seamless marriage that I don't know how we lived without. And really knew what they were talking about. It took the time to learn what we did instead of just sell us a product. I knew that that was gonna be our, our company for life. I highly recommend Rev Business. We just moved, so there's millions of people. Dahlia's in bloom, over nine acres. When we started, we grew a quarter of an acre. Now I'm taking on new products on the right. We always dreamed of having this property, so. I want to make my yard look as beautiful as largemouth bass. Yep. We've got tons of them, don't we, buddy? There are millions of ways to make the most of your land. How will you make the most of yours? Come see us at Ascension Equipment for John Deere sales and service. Save more today and mow tomorrow. Piku Builder Supply, your one-stop lumberyard, provides an extensive selection of quality building supplies for your new construction and remodeling. We offer computer-aided estimating of your building and remodeling plans, as well as blueprint copies. From humble beginnings to becoming the industry leader in Gonzales and beyond, Piku proudly supports our local community because we believe in giving back to those who have had a hand in our success. Let the experts at Piku Builder Supply help you with your new project today. This baby will get your heart racing, as much as your slick new devices do. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet, all the time. Build your plan at Let'sRev.com. Let's Rev. Internet speeds so fast, you're going to need seatbelts for your sofa. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet, all the time. Build your plan at Let'sRev.com. Let's Rev. This, this is a walk-on athlete. They push harder and put their heart into the game. 
This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with a taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Welcome to the Rev Game of the Week. Santa Ma versus East Ascension, the big rivalry here in Ascension Parish. Jeff Porsche, David Swacker, Troy LaBeouf will bring you all the action tonight. And we are getting ready for the pregame festivities. But while we wait for that, we have a lot of information to share with you about tonight's game. So let's get right to it and talk about some of the game notes for tonight. This is meeting at number 44. All-time EA leads 22 to 21. So if Santa Ma would win tonight, this series would be back to 500 once again. The series started in 79, only canceled one time because of Hurricane Katrina. All-time points scored. Look at the average there, 23 and a half to 21 and a half. Santa Ma leads in points 1009 to 925. Four overtime games. We had one back in 2020 game that I covered in the first game that I had covered in this rivalry, and it was won by EA. EA has won all four overtime games. Longest win streak. EA has a six-game streak from 81 to 86. Santa Ma four games from 97 to 2000. The largest margin of victory in 2016. Santa Ma won 54 to 6. And in 1979, EA won 35 to 6, the inaugural game in this rivalry. And... This one is at Spartan Stadium. EA leads all time here, 12 to nine, and at the pit, as you would expect, Santa Ma's home stadium, they lead in the series 12 to 10. Now you get two veteran coaches that are going to be on display tonight, and there's David Oliver on the left, the Santa Ma longtime head coach, 15 years with the Gators, 97-66 overall. Overall versus East Ascension, he's six and nine. So looking to get closer to 500 tonight all time as the Gator head coach on the EA side. Darnell Lee, you see on the bottom, he has a winning record, four and three overall. He has been here for seven years, 51 and 33 overall. This is a great rivalry between these two coaches, very competitive between the two of them. And this game, as we mentioned in the opening, is the beginning of the district season in District 5-5A. And let's look at the district records while we have a chance. And Santa Ma, 5-0 on the season, the best non-district record in 5-5A. They're trying to get to 6-0 tonight, and they're ranked very high in the power rankings as well. Dutchtown's undefeated at 4-0. They had a win via forfeit against Carver last week, and they also had a bye week or an open date during that time as well. That's why they have one less game. Walker, they're 4-1, and one, and Walker and Dutchtown play tonight. That's going to be an interesting game we'll talk about a little bit. Live Oak and Denham, look at that right there. You had the uh, surprise last night. Live Oak beat Denham Springs 21-14. to We'll talk about that a little bit as well as we go down the line. But Live Oak starts 1-0. They were dead last winless in district last year. Denham Springs shared the title, and now they're 0-1 one season later. East Ascension, they're 1-4 at the bottom of District 5-5A in the non-district schedule, but there's a reason for that, and we're going to talk about that a lot during the broadcast. And even though you have 5-0 versus 1-4, this is going to be a very competitive game and a very close game, and hard to pick our predict the winner in this one tonight. Last week in the games, we had the homecoming game, Santa Ma versus Jefferson Rise, and Santa Ma won very easily, 53 to nothing. And then East Ascension went to De La Salle on Thursday night, a team that beat them last year. They came back and beat them soundly on the road, 44 to seven. That was East Ascension's first victory of the season. And so we are moments away from the beginning of our pregame ceremonies. As you can see down on the bottom, the East Ascension Band led by Mr. Charles Lee. 
and assisted by David Gambino. They will take the field for the national anthem and all that fun stuff. And something that we're really looking forward to as well is the coin toss because during the coin toss and after the coin toss, there's going to be a special ceremony recognizing one of the greatest players in East Ascension football history, Glenn Dorsey. As you see right there, he is out here and he's going to be honored tonight. And we'll have an interview from Troy LaBeouf at halftime with Glenn Dorsey. So look forward to that. That'll be after the band performance here at halftime. And so we are just moments away. And now we will throw it over to my partner here in the broadcast, a man that is very synonymous with this rivalry, a man who is 7-2. and two. Overall, one of the uh, most successful coaches in the Santa Ma East Ascension rivalry, former Gator coach David Swacker, and it's great to have you aboard here one more time tonight, Coach. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. This is a big night for Ascension Parish people. You know, some times I'm asked, you know, tell me about the rivalry. And uh, basically, you know, I could sit there and chat, you know, at length with them, but all you have to do is come to this, and you don't have to come at seven o'clock, Jeff. Yeah, come at eight o'clock on Friday morning, and people are already trying to park. People are already lighting the barbecue pits. It's an exciting time, and then if you go to each one of these schools, they're having all kinds of activities all day long. At each school Thursday night, they're having uh, pep rallies at the stadiums. So it is a tremendous time for this community and for both of these teams. And uh, I was just fortunate enough that I was in a, involved in a bunch of them. And luckily, you know, uh, we went 7-2 and two when I was the head coach. But I'm going to just tell you, people ask me about that sometimes, and I just say, with the coaching staff I had, the kids that I had, the players, uh, I'm not going to say my job was uh, simple, but uh, we had some success against East Ascension. And uh, Coach Oliver has taken over and really done a great job at uh, Santa Ma High School. And so look forward to see what happens here. Fixing to have uh, teams from both sides, you know, come to the sidelines after the band uh, performs the national anthem. So we are just moments away from the national anthem as it's going to be a fun one here tonight. And you can see on the far side, the Gators, who are usually clad in black tonight, they're wearing the orange. And on the Spartan side, of course, the traditional blue. But uh, you want to give us some insight on why Santa Ma wears orange in tonight's uh, football game, Coach? Well, my wife would tell you all about that. For, uh, basically, at, at both schools, she was at East Ascension uh, at the end of her career in the um, – the beginning of her career, she was uh, at Santa Ma, and basically on on Friday, and you'll see game day right here. A number of the fans, the student body, all wearing camouflage. They are hunting the Gators, and so you have to be camouflage, just like the deer hunter and stuff. And uh, then the Spartans, I mean, then the Gators all all have that orange on because they're over here participating in the same thing, going against East Ascension. And Coach Oliver, I think his deal is um, th that if uh, we do well here and we're successful, maybe everybody will get that orange jersey. That's right. And uh, tonight's game, we I talked about this briefly, and maybe you can expand on it a little bit. It's 5-0 and versus 1-4, and so you might think, well, this ought to be an easy one for Santa Ma. It's not going to be an easy one. Why is EA 1-4 and on this season, Coach? And does that tell the whole story? Well, I, I started uh, week one with me, Zachary. You know, the best team probably in 5A. And then you had West Monroe over the years – Bet one of the best teams in 5A. And then they played Alexandria. And uh, you, you, you thought that might be a ch chance that they get, get in the, on the win column. Didn't quite happen for them. So everyone that they played has been a very good football team. And they just haven't quite till last week against De La Salle. They really did a, a better job. 
and uh, took advantage of some situations and won that game. And, of course, they also played Destrahan, and Destrahan, the defending state champions, lost that game. They were winning at halftime, so they've been competitive against these teams, just haven't found the winning formula yet, but there's a chance that they could pull that out tonight. As we said, I, these teams are pretty evenly matched in spite of the record. But right now we're going to throw it to the public address announcer and get ready for the performance by the East Ascension Band. And the ROTC Color Guard will come out and present the colors. And they are led by Cadet Mia Roussel, Cadet Gabriella Deaton, Cadet Gitsak Escalante, and Cadet Stephen Smith, and you see them getting ready to take the field as well. So we are just about ready for the East Ascension Band and the National Anthem. So we're going to go to the field and to the live shot, and the public address announcer and the band will come up shortly. While we continue to wait, as you see the East Ascension team getting ready to run through the tunnel, we'll get the two teams headed to the field shortly, and we'll get to the National Anthem, which will be performed tonight by Alicia Hill. And then we'll get to the coin toss and the ceremony to honor East Ascension legend Glenn Dorsey. So we're just moments away, I believe, from East Ascension. Storming through the Spartan. You see them right there. And on the left side, Santa Ma getting ready as well. This is a fun night and a great rivalry. I wonder who's going to get out there first. may be simultaneous let's see this is always fun to see the rivalry that goes on with the storming out onto the field and here come the Gators they're first Five and zero, oh, the top record in District Five Five A non district this season. Now to your right side, the Spartan Nation getting ready to take the field and run through the 
color guard and the cheerleaders and go through midfield. Spartans not in much of a hurry right now. We're still about six minutes away from 7 o'clock, so we are right on time. Well, it'll be interesting just to see. It'll be interesting just to see who's going to be leading that. You saw one of the uh, Gator coaches uh, doing one of those nice little chants, and here they come. And here come the Spartans. Little fireworks action out there on the field. Always something extra on both sides in this rivalry, Coach. No doubt about it. It's a, a really special thing, and uh, we're glad that we're being we, we're able to broadcast it. So. Some people at home able to watch the game. Uh. Welcome to everybody who is watching us for the first time, and now we'll throw it to the public address. Tonight, the East Ascension High School Spartans host the Sanimo High School Gators. The press box is under the direction of the East Ascension High School Booster Club, and all sponsorship funds are donated to the East Ascension High School Booster Club. Would everyone please rise for the tonight's indication, which will be led by Kale Marix, a senior member of the EA chapter of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Father, I pray tonight that you keep a helping hand of safety for all the staff and players on this field. I pray that your Holy Spirit guides and helps us as this game continues. After all is said and done, I pray that no matter which side we're on, True sportsmanship and true love that you provided will be shown throughout this stadium tonight and days ahead. We thank you for your many blessings and most importantly, the sacrifice you made on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem by the pride of EA Sport and Band. Tonight, the national anthem will be performed by Alicia Hill, a junior member of the EA Choir and Allied Health Program. Today's colors are being presented by the Naval Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps, which includes students from both East Ascension and Santa Mon High Schools. Color Guard members include National Flag Cadet Mia Roussel, State Flag Cadet Gabriella Deaton, Right Rifleman Cadet Yitzhak Escalante, and Right Left Rifleman Cadet Stephen Smith.
Very nice performance of the National Anthem by Alicia Hill. And the band will leave the field and we will get ready for the coin toss as we are moments away from Santa Mall at East Ascension. It's a nice night out here. Right now it's already under 80 degrees, 79 degrees here in Gonzales. Temperature will drop into the low 70s before the end of the night. It's supposed to get into the 60s tonight and then into the 50s tomorrow. So finally, some football feeling weather here in Ascension Parish as we get ready for the, the coin toss. And we're going to take it down to the field right now and go to the shot and get the officials to conduct the coin toss with Andre and Troy down on the field, followed by the Glenn Dorsey ceremony. So let's go down to the field now. Captains, for tonight's game, for your Santa Monica High School Gators, number seven, Braxton Spike, and also number 12, Luke Raffer. For your East Ascension High School Sports, Captain number 53, Kaylin Gant, number 45, Francisco Ramirez, and number 50, Nathan Allen. Also, we have a guest honorary captain returning to Spartan Stadium. Number 72, Spartan legend, Glenn Dorsey. You're the visitor, so you can call it. I want you to call it before I toss it. I'm gonna let it hit the ground, okay? You got heads, you got tails, what's your call? Heads. Called heads. Santa Mo wants the football. All right, would y'all line up over here, please, guys? Santa Mo wants the football. Santa Mo's wanting to toss. We'll receive down here. All right, guys. All right, guys. Santa Mo's gonna get the football first tonight. You're gonna see that East Ascension defense come out first. It should be a good one, guys. Back to you guys in the booth. So we are just about ready for the opening kickoff, but before we get to the opening kickoff, we're going to get the ceremony for Glenn Dorsey. As you see, the family and many people heading out to the field. former EA football player, Glenn Butt Dorsey. In 2003, Glenn was the Louisiana Defensive Player of the Year, a Parade All-American, and led his Spartan football team to a quarterfinal appearance in the state playoffs. At LSU, Glenn was first team All-American in 2006 and 2007. He's the most decorated defensive player in LSU football history as the winner of the Outland, Lombardi, Nagurski, and Locke trophies. In his senior season, Glenn led the Tigers to the 2007 BCS National Championship. In 2020, he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. He is one of only 16 LSU Tigers in the College Hall of Fame. In 2008, he was drafted fifth overall by the Chiefs where he spent five seasons in Kansas City before finishing his professional career in San Francisco with the 49ers. He is joined on the field by his wife Tiffany, his son Max, his father Glenn Sr., his mother Sandra, his sister Toy, and other friends and family. We are also proud to welcome back former EA head coach Billy Beasley, Glenn's defensive coordinator Jeff Daniel, Assistant coaches Marcus Spardwell and Randy Watts. And his former Gonzalez middle coach, Boo Ruiz. Glenn Dorsey is a member of the initial class of the EA Hall of Fame. However, Glenn was a little busy playing football for the LSU Tigers to receive that honor. Tonight, we would like to properly induct Glenn Dorsey into the EA Hall of Fame. Presenting him with this Spartan bus to DA Principal Lauren Lambert Avery and head football coach and athletic director Darnell Lee. At this time, please direct your attention to Burnside Avenue end zone. Although no Spartan football player has ever worn number 72 in a varsity game since Glenn graduated in 2004, the EA football program is officially retiring the number 72 to honor one of EA's greatest players and students.
Ladies and gentlemen, a Citroen Parishes Fighting Tiger, the pride of Gonzales Middle, an EA legend, number 72, Glenn Dorsey. Quite the honor there, and uh, you tell he was touched and humbled by that, and a great sign out there on the uh, underneath the scoreboard here at Spartan Stadium as Glenn Dorsey is honored. Santa Ma has is going to get the ball first, and so let's look at the Santa Ma offensive starters coming to the field after the kickoff, and they're going to be led by Cooper Babin at quarterback, and Troy LaBeouf is going to give you some more information about that in a little while. But running back, Kyron Kraft, the receivers, Timothy Johnson, Brody Kernan, Jermichael Million, Easton Jaro. And then on the offensive line, Jet Lemoyne, Seth Guidry, Cooper Cheatwood, Elijah Thornton, and Dominic Vazzini. Let's get to the defensive starters on East Ascension while we have a chance as well. The four defensive linemen, Joseph Hobby, Nathan Allen, John Brown, and Caden Womack. Linebackers, Zachary Jupiter, Shaquan Isom. And then at corners, you had Brennan Thompson and Bryce Harkless. And then at safety, Deron McZeal, Lamar Bolden, and Tanner Stanga. And, Coach, we are ready for football. A lot of things go ha happen here. It's just not uh, a football game going on. There's a lot of people participating. You see right now they're marking off, uh, let's say, 50, uh, 15 yards, personal foul penalty because the Gators are out of uniform color and uh, that's just a tradition that coach Oliver has started it many years ago and uh, so the Spartans will be able to kick off from the 40 yard line some people might think good time for an onside kick some people might think a little pop-up kick and there it is the onsider right there and it's taken and Santa Mar recovers at the 32 yard line so they get really good field position so basically it's a deal there Jeff either it's going to be good or whatever uh, with the onside and not recovered so the plus yardage there first it'll be the return of quarterback Cooper Babin to the huddle. Babin was injured in the first game of the season. He's rehabilitated. He played a little bit last week against Jefferson Rise just to get the rust off. Chase Kelly's done a fantastic job in his absence but Cooper Babin back under center tonight for the Gators. Guys back to y'all. And on first down for Santa Ma, you get a nice six yard gain by number 19 Tyree Williams the backup running back coach. And uh, probably one of your better athletes on the team. And a uh, little outside sweep, outside zone, as you refer to it nowadays in the spread offense. So it's about six. It's second, and you see movement, and they're going to get five more. This may give them enough for a first down, as it looks like he got about five and a half on first. And so let's see if they get the first. I'm assuming that. It was the offense, I mean, the defense that moved. Let's see. Well, he's looking at Coach Oliver, so it would have to be that. Yeah. The white hat, the referee. And so it is enough, it looks like. The public address announcer has already said first down for the Gators. So it's first down at the 44-yard line. So I guess recovering that onside kick gave him a little bit of an advantage with good field position as we get you can talk about that after this play coach on first and ten there's a pass complete close to another first down caught by number 12 Luke Raffray so and, and look right now when you get two first downs right off the bat you know this is just my thought on this you know, either the defense is going to win. A lot of people say, I want to go on defense first. Some people like to go on offense, and here they are, the Gators are on offense first. So second and one, high snap, but they get the handoff and a first down. That's Kyron Kraft. But I guess when you have that, as you said, the ball kicking off from the 45, you, you try the onside kick because why not? But then when Santa Mar recovers, they get really good field position. And there, there's no doubt. And, and Kraft has had all, a lot of success uh, for the Gators here. Uh, and when he gets the ball, he's not a very tall kid. He can get behind 
those tall linemen and find him some holes in there. First and 10, 45 yard line and a fake and down the middle, wide open and caught and a first down and that's Jermichael Million, the two sports star for the Gators. And here it is, fake, and basically it's a RPO, and they're just checking out that backside backer. Therefore, um, East Ascension, and if he kind of trails that, like that run going to the right outside, then you got that little opening right there with Jamaica and uh, Cooper hooked up. First down at the 28, and a big hole, and another first down. As Kraft gets inside the 15 into the red zone for the Gators. So East Ascension, in order to slow this thing down, they're going to have to tackle one of the running backs. As you see right here, another first down. So it is at the 19 first and 10. No, 14, excuse me, first and 10 for the Gators. And there's a sweep. And breaks a tackle, but then, oh, that's clobbered. As you see, number 12 with the big tackle right there for the, so, uh, the Spartans, McZeal. So you say, how how do you stop this? Well, you get a two-sport guy in, in uh, Laurent McZeal, and he comes up and makes a big play, uh, tackling on the outside sweep for no gain. They're actually going to say a gloss of one, so it's going to be second and eleven from the 15 from the right hash. I'm having a hard time seeing the orange flag over there. First down deal with the orange. Yes. Standing room only. Babbin all day to the end zone. Close to it. Caught. Jermichael Million first and goal perhaps. It's right at that marker. And Jermichael Million point guard for basketball. Wide receiver for football. Nice protection by the offensive line. And Jamaica's just coming underneath. You know, a lot of people think if you get near that goal line, you're going to get in the end zone. He cut it off shorter and was uh, open there. First and goal from the three for Santa Ma. And handoff close. No signal. And the, the near side official says he's down inside the Ryan one. The so that was it's Williams on the carry. Gets a couple, but not quite enough. Well, a great thing for East Ascension right here. If they could shut them down and hold them to just a free throw. I'm not a free throw. A field goal or a field goal attempt right here. Some big plays coming up right here for the East Ascension defense. And now Kraft will try to just push behind the big lineman. And he is no signal yet. Touchdown. Touchdown. And look at Santa Ball. They strike first, Coach. I tell you what, that was about the most impressive drive I've seen by a high school football team. I mean, that was seriously impressive. You know, Absolutely. no incompletions. You had about four or five first downs. You know, they were up in a little up speed tempo right there, which, you know, most people in the spread really like that. So... We're going to see just exactly, and of course, you see Coach Oliver, he likes his swinging gate stuff, and uh, it, could, it could be beneficial for you in some close games. This is Easton Jaro as they go back to the traditional extra point, and it is up, and it is good, and we're going to take a break with Santa Monica leading 7-0. You are watching the Rev Game of the Week. Looking for an extraordinary education opportunity? Introducing Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where you can earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree from River Parish's Community College at the same time. Experience the best of both worlds as high schools seamlessly blend with college coursework in a rigorous yet supportive program. Yet stay connected to your home high school through clubs, organizations, and sports. And here's the best part. Students pay no tuition or textbook cost. Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where your future begins today. 7-0, very impressive drive to start the night for Santa Ma as they get the early lead with 8.15 left to go in the first. Jeff Porsche, David Swacker, Troy LaBeouf with you tonight. Very impressive coach. And it, it, to me, one of the big things in high school football because sometimes the kicking game is completely absent. 
And uh, here you got have Gyro. Now he is 17 out of 18. And if, uh, East Ascension, when they score, Ramirez is 11 out of 12 right now. So the kicking game is very good for both teams tonight. So we are ready as Gyro will kick off for the Gators from the 40. And it's going to go deep. And it's going to be a touchback, and that will give us time to go through the starters for the East Ascension Spartans on offense. And tonight it's going to be Hudson Browning. He's been wearing 44 all year. Tonight he's wearing number one. In the backfield, two guys that get the ball a lot, Taj Washington, Brennan Thompson. Receivers, Ja'Cory Mitchell, Jackson Chasson, Lathan Dumas. Offensive line, Colin Netter, Kendrell Green, Derez Queen, Aiden Joseph, and Bryson Martinez. As you see, number one, not number 44, taking the field. And uh, not sure. I haven't heard uh, why the change. Have you, uh, Jeff? No, he was a starter for the first four games. And then you had Caden Gotro played last week, got the win. And it looks like a little tight formation. And they're just going to try to ram it up the middle, and they get two or three as we now take a look at the Santa Ma defensive starters. They're going to run three, four. Jai Joseph, Cohen Rock, and Cameron Hill. Then you got a linebacker, Trabo, Salzarulo, Smith, and Leonard. Defensive backs, Ricks, Spite, Swanson, and Sanders. And it's three yards, second and three from the 23. Well, you talked about a three, four. That was a 10-1. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Thomas's uh, defensive front reacted well. And there's a handoff up the middle, and that's just straightforward running right up the middle for first down, and that is number three, Brennan Thompson with the carry. 62. It's a big offensive lineman right behind big. him, number 62. You just said that's a... Kelvin Gray Jr. not in the starting lineup. And uh, Bryson Martin has driving defenders all the way back 10 yards on that play. Outstanding job there by the offensive line by both teams tonight in the first two series. And a quick shotgun pass caught. And that's Chasson. And that's close to another first down. The, full, the near side official is at the 45. So that's going to be a yard, a yard shy, second and one. Yeah. Well, Shasaw is one of these receivers. He's going to catch everything that's around him, and he, he's a guy that you can count on either short or making something happen over the top. The second and one, EA looking to answer on their opening drive and not going to get there as good defense by Santa Ma takes down Browning. Number two, Lane Swanson from his safety position, Coach. Yeah, nice job right there, and also uh, almost almost had his knee down on the snap trying to pick up the ball. But they're going to say he didn't, and so he gets back to the line of scrimmage, third and one. See those linebackers, you watch them when they get that staggered stance. They are usually coming. And right now it looks good. And watch. And that is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage as they go with their big back, Brennan Thompson. And he's met by a bunch of guys. You see number 95. You see number two. That's Swanson again. Also, Giant Joseph and a couple of other Gators. Watch the Gators right there. Big third, 22. 22 with the tackle. We're going to give him credit for it. That's Miles Dennis. He's listed as a running back. And three. And but he wasn't by himself, uh, Jeff. A uh, yep. very good job there by the Gators. And look, it's all about those linebackers getting in that gap that's not going to be covered by an offensive lineman. So the offense for the Spartans is forced to punt. And there's a kick by Ramirez. Good kick. Going to bounce at the 25. Take a great bounce inside the 10. And inside the five and they're gonna mark him out of bounds at the seven so let's go down to the field right now 
Gators take over first Great start by Cooper Babbin. He didn't show any rust on that on that first series for Santa Mar Right down the field, you saw the RPO action from him. They come back, Santa Mar's defense. You saw a similar package what they saw against Opelousas a couple of weeks ago on the E-Tail Rev, e game of the week. It's all Santa Mar early in this one. The coaches are talking to the Spartans on the sideline right now. That big offensive line's got to exert their will on this Santa Mar front. Guys, back to you. First and 10, and the punter, Ramirez, did his job flipping the field as they get it first and down inside the 10-yard line and babbing at quarterback and a whistle and a flag. How important is a punt like that, Coach? Well, you know, I, I look at it two different ways. Number one, if you're back there, you need to catch the ball. Yep. You know, even if you have to go up 10 yards, fair catch it. You know, th this is crucial. Now, just think about this, Jeff. East Ascension onside kick. They get Santa Mar gets it around the 33, 34 yard line. Okay, East Ascension uh, basically uh, one first down and out. They punt the ball instead of starting at the 33. They're starting at the inside the five yard line. With the penalty, it's first and 13. Outstanding job by the East Ascension punter. And play action pressure. And it's caught close to a first down. And that's a good concentration there by the receiver. Is that Raffray? That's, I uh, no, that's Jaro. That's Jaro, yes. Jaro, Jaro thought he was kicking an extra point here. Tell you what, he uh, took a shot, and that was number seven, Lamar Bolden. But uh, couldn't draw the ball loose, Coach. Boy, East Ascension, outstanding job with the stunt. Cooper Babin, outstanding job of giving up time to get Jairo time to get down there and a nice little throw over the middle. Second down and uh, one. So Hobdy come off the field, may have been hurt on that play, but they nearly got to the uh, quarterback, Babin, right there. Two or three guys on the blitz, but a good job getting that ball away by the quarterback. Now it's second and one for the Gators. And that's a handoff and close. Williams as that's Tyree Williams and waiting for an official to indicate. Well, you know, your lead, your lead sideline official is the guy that's going to be on the chain side. Yeah. And when he starts uh, waving those guys on, that means it's first down. Got you. A lot of times people just see, see the white hat doing his thing. But that guy on the sideline, you know, he's he's basically in charge of those those chain game. 431 left to go. 7-0 Santa Mar with the ball. Gonna pass. Caught again in a late flag. They're gonna get a maybe a targeting call as the catch was made by Million and then the DB came. Looked like right on time, but maybe a maybe a little little hard, a little high. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm the, the the new uh, you know as far as trying to get uh, hard blows out of football, uh, it's going to take a few years. I mean, all the way up to the professional level, and uh, they're waving it off. I think that's the right call. Yeah. I don't think there was anything. I mean, you know, th there will there. there will be some hitting in football. I promise you. Yeah, I think it was timed very well. You see it right there, and that's number four. Bryce Harkless for for the Spartans in what has been determined to be a legal hit. And I like the, you know, I'm sure we have a very good group here, officials. They got together, talked about it, and came up uh, with the, you know, I would think the right decision. I agree. Five-yard gain, second and five. So the shotgun, Babin. And we have a whistle and a timeout, I believe, has timeout, been called by the Gators as why don't we take a look at the results from last week while we have a chance. The games that were played in District 5-5A, the final games before district play began. East Ascension had the big win, 44-7. You see Santa Mar further down, 53-0 over Jefferson Rise. Walker beat Bel Air. Dutchtown had a forfeit victory over Carver. STM beat Denham Springs, and Kennedy defeated Live Oak. 
And, uh, you know, Lyle and I were talking about Jefferson won this week. Yes. So Thomas Jefferson beat Ben Franklin. Yeah, and I, I believe that uh, Alexander Hamilton may have been on the sidelines, right, officiating the game or something like that. I, that, or, you know, that's probably a pretty good shot. Yep. So second and five. Two backs in the backfield with a Cooper. And it's play fake. Deep downfield. Caught first down, Gators. And that's your guy again, Coach Easton Gyro with the catch. And basically, you, watch Gyro coming out of the, in your picture right now, going right down the middle. Two safeties deep, I believe, on that. And Gyro, all he does is split them. And, of course, on that, you know, you got to have a little bit of a touch but a little bit of zip on the ball. So I'm sure you've heard a lot, and I'm sure that Troy touched on this a lot. Cooper Babin getting his first start here tonight. He got some action against Jefferson Rise. He's a sophomore. He was expected to be the next quarterback here for the, down the line, but he but was injured a lot. And, and the big reason, we'll, we'll cover that in just a second. As short gain There's by Kraft. Kraft. But, you know, Chase Kelly last year was a starter, and then Cooper came in and was a starter. Chase Kelly, Cooper got hurt in like the first series of the, the first game of the year. Chase, Chase Kelly has taken over and has done nothing but an extremely great job. I agree. Five and O. Oh. And Babin gets the nod tonight, and he is, I believe, perfect so far. And quick pass, it's dropped. Hobby had an interception all the way as he stepped in front of Million. And it's third down, and uh, you got the bullet right there. But we'll watch the outside backer right here. He's in your picture. Look at there him. There he is. And basically, I'm just thinking that it should have been to the second receiver. Good job right there, that outside backer for East Ascension. That was Hobby. Joseph Hobby, number 23. Yes. It's going to be third down and nine. Got one on first down, incomplete pass on I second. Think a big play for the Spartans here. You can see those linebackers coming. And there comes on a blitz and stays in the pocket, and it's nearly picked off by Lamar Bolden. May have been cut off by McSeal right there, his own teammate, as he, would, he had that ball all the way, Coach. Yeah, it would. If, if this ball gets intercepted, may not be in a bad predicament right there. Uh, also, Million did a good job right there uh, dislodging be, the ball. Becoming a defender on that play. Boy, a big stop by the East Ascension Spartans. And Jaro's big a spot. Punt, and it's a nice punt taken at the 12. Breaks a tackle, but not any more than that as the returner for East Ascension. So this, Matthew Collins. This is how I look at it right here, Jeff. Yeah. This drive started inside the five. And, and you want to flip the field if you're the defensive uh, de for East Ascension. They get their opportunity, but it's just like it's just like Santa Maul just kicked off to them, and they're returning the kickoff to the 20-yard line right here. So not able to take advantage of some good defense just has to be a little bit more consistent for the Spartans. And now East Ascension with Browning at quarterback has it at the 20. That's where they started their first drive as well. As a handoff, big hole. Thompson breaks a tackle. No, that's Washington. And he's carrying defenders with him to the 45. First down. For the Spartans. And let's just watch this. Is this just zone blocking here? Or do we have a little trap in here? There's that guard, that H back uh, pulling in there with a little trap. Washington did this over and over against West Monroe. Had an outstanding game. The offensive line had an outstanding game. And he uh, was the, uh, the leading rusher in that particular game. Right. Thompson and Washington have been the leading ball carriers lately. 150 yards for Thompson so far, Washington so far this season. 
And there's a flag getting thrown in in about the middle of the play as Browning is going to be about a yard or two shy of the first down. But I think this play is coming back, Coach. Looks like a hold or an illegal block in the back. Well, I'm looking at who threw the penalty. It looks like it's the umpire. And when the umpire throws it, it's usually holding by the offensive line. Now, that penalty's changed, Jeff. It yeah. used to be a spot foul, and uh, now it is uh, from the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be first and 20, you say, yeah. right? And, and let me just tell you, offensive line coaches, well, offensive coaches in general, they say it's about time. Now, I think this has gone all the way up maybe to the NFL. But uh, it, it creates a, a lot better situation for offenses that, especially high school, where throwing is not the norm like it is right. in college and in the uh, NFL. So it's first and 20 for East Ascension after the penalty. Made a mistake earlier. Taj Washington has 198 yards on the season, not 150. So he's the leading rusher for the Spartans. And... I believe he may be in the backfield here with Browning. No, that's Brennan Thompson, excuse me. Four receivers, two left, two right. Well, East Ascension's uh, checking to a different play. And uh, Santa Mall makes it their checks. And Thompson gets it, and a good job by the D-line that time. And you see 96 right there with the tackle for the Gators. That's Gabe Ford. Defensive lineman. So they're going to get about a yard. So it's second and 19 as we are now approaching one minute left to go in the first quarter. And these guys right here, Jai Joseph, Cohen Rock, and uh, Cayman uh, Hill have done an outstanding job. Shotgun pass caught, but not much. To Corey Mitchell with the reception, as that's his 19th reception on the season, and it's going to be third down and about 14. Well, that was uh, Damon Damon Smith with the tackle, and if he gets out of that grab, it's going to be an easy first down and a lot more yardage downfield. Third and 14 on what could be the final play of the first quarter. Shotgun, pass, receiver open, but it just missed it. DeCorey Mitchell had a first down and then some if he's able to corral that one. I, I think Mitchell's probably thinking maybe I should have dove. Yeah. Maybe he just got a little bit off balance in the running, but it was a pretty good chunk there. I think I think I agree with you. I think if, if he makes a dive right there, that ball is right there. Well, he probably thinks I'm catching this and turning up field. Right. He may have got the big eyes thinking he could have maybe turned the corner and gone down the sideline. Well, let's see what happens in the punt game. Ten seconds left after the play stops, after the incompletion, the clock stops. There's movement, and we have a flag. Well, you had movement by the Gators, but I, I don't. I don't think that movement crossed into the uh, offside area. The right side of the East Ascension offensive yeah. line moved as well. That right tackle, I believe it is. Yep. Uh, on the punt team, you know that defense can move all at once, but they just cannot get into that neutral zone. And of course, the offensive line, you know, once they get set, you know, they, they have to be set. Until the ball is snapped. And there's a high snap, but it's there, and it's away, and a line drive. Takes another bounce. Not quite as successful a bounce as before. And the ball to the 34-yard line as the first quarter ends. And right now we're going to throw it to the sideline and Troy LaBeouf. Score, Santa Monica 7, Spartan 0. 
Watching Santa Maul defensively, Coach Dwayne Thomas's group, what they're doing, they're moving that defense, they're stemming that defensive front before the snap. They're setting up early in the snap count, before the ball is snapped, and they're moving around. I think it's causing a little bit of confusion on the offensive line for East Ascension. That's something they're working on right behind us. They're looking at it on film. Got to fix that. EA's got to be able to pertain, uh, possess the football. So far, Santa Maul's been able to move the football, although EA defense almost came up with an interception and had a chance to get two interceptions earlier. So, so far, advantage Santa Maul. Yeah, he's got to try to figure out how to move the ball on offense. Guys? As the second quarter is ready to begin, we are going to keep it here and get to the first play as the punt by Ramirez. Not as good as his first punt as the Gators were started at the 34-yard line, Coach. That's where they started their first drive. First drive, this is what I see as an offensive coach. You got all the way out there, one-on-one. -on -one. Can, you, can you go throw the ball deep down here? Can you protect? And on first down, very short game. As you see, number 34, Shaquan Isom, along with a couple of other defenders for EA. Well, you know, you basically got Kyron Kraft with the carry, and, you know, he's going to be your guy that's not going to look real special at times, and then at times he's going to make some nice yardage for you. Gain of two for Kraft. He's their biggest offensive threat from the backfield, as you see the reverse, and Million has the blockers ahead of him, and he gets the first down. So well designed. You saw Babin out there to ready to throw a block, but he didn't have to, first and ten. <laughs> uh, Cooper, Cooper's going to say, watch this block and uh, watch me get out of the way. But watch this nice little flip there by Kraft. And uh, Jamaica, who is you know one of your faster kids on the field right now. It's a good game. He's got good acceleration. He, we talk about him as one of the two sport guys, basketball and yeah. when, when football. You when you have these trick plays, boy, when, it, when it's, it's really nice when they work. Yeah. You're right about that. As a handoff up the middle, I believe that's Williams. Only gets a couple. Yet you haven't seen Babin throw the ball here. We were so complimentary of him in the opening drive. And then his last two passes were nearly picked off, Coach. And, and, and not real, real certain, you know, about that because, you know, his dad is the offensive coordinator, and it might uh, be something that he sees. Uh, let, let, let me calm him down right here. Uh, and, uh, you know, right now they've kind of uh, turned that field position around. They have. They're in EA territory, and there's a quick pass. And gets it to Mr. Reliable, Easton Gyro, first down for the Gators. And you, you see Gyro coming into this game has the most receptions of all the receivers. And look, he's on the sideline already. I mean, you could have thrown that underneath there uh, to uh, Kraft. He did a good job right there. That, was, that ball had some zip on it right where it needed to be on the turn. So first down at the 32, and the Gators are driving. So you're at East Ascension right here. And uh, basically you have two guys, so it's a run-type situation. And that's Kraft, and he is dragged down from behind by Jupiter, or else he would have got a lot more Boy, there. And I'm going to tell you, Jupiter does an outstanding job right there, getting through a hole right there and just tripping up Kraft a little bit for a medium-sized gain. He has over 300 yards on the season. Didn't get a lot there, but he's got some good good yardage here and good running so far tonight. And now that's going to be second yeah. and about six for the Gators. Good shot of Cooper Babin right there. And a quick pass. Sideline. Caught. That is that's it's Luke Raffery. So Raffery. And that's close to another first down. Yeah, that's a good job. It is a first down. But see, th this is this is what the spread offense needs to be all about. That uh, you know, I didn't feel like I had that much success with this. But you, you get somebody like Luke Raffrey. He's got like half a dozen catches. And how critical was that catch 
Well, we'll have to find out what happens in this drive. But everybody kind of doing their job right there. And uh, where you have to you have to cover them because anybody can hurt you. And this time it's a fake and crossing route. And 34, Isom was in the right in the path of the ball and got some flags on the field back at the 30. This, this may be a little roughing perhaps, Coach? Well, I, I, I think a late hit. Uh, Cooper's uh, helmet came off, and I think the rule is this, that if, if that was part of the penalty, he could stay in. If it's not part of the penalty, he has to go out for. It's a face mask, so probably yes. got him and ripped it off. Yeah. Did not see that. Let's see if the replay was able to get it. I was watching the pass, a little crossing route. Yeah, he got looked like he got turned around, and we lost it. Yeah, that's going to make it first, and goal from the 10. So and this like, is where East Ascension might have a an advantage here, Jeff. Yeah, I saw that against Alexandria. Yeah. They made a couple of good defensive stops in that game, including one goal line stand at the one. Some big guys. And movement on the offensive line, so it's first and goal from the 15. The ball is right at the 10. They cannot get inside the one and get a first down. They have to get into the end zone. As 9.31 left to go in the second quarter. And Santa Maria leads 7-0 over East Ascension. Oh, East Ascension uh, right there. Th that front three or four guys, uh, Walmack, Brown, Allen, and Hobby, they they have got to get some, some penetration, and the linebackers have to do an outstanding job filling in for uh, holes to be able to make tackles. Play fake, looking left all the way. Fade to the end zone, up for grabs, nearly picked. Overthrown, and DB in the end zone. Got his hands on it, and I believe that's... Well, they run, 15, run a little believe. double move right here with Gyro. Probably the best thing that you could do right there for Cooper Babbitt, throw it out of bounds. Yeah, that was 19 who was the nearest... Player to the ball, East Ascension DB Ernest Mitchell. Jr. I mean, you, you look around here now. You got people everywhere. Yep, standing room only here on Burnside at Spartan Stadium. And there's a throw right and attempting to make the catch, and he did. That's Raffray with a nice diving catch, keeping his feet in bounds. Apparently, first that's not a first down, but it's going to be third and goal from the seven. Well, it make, makes this a a better possibility. A nice little throw on the sidearm there by Babin. Looked like he got his at least one foot in, which is all you need here in high school football. So it's going to be so, third and goal from the seven. Spartans, you going to be bringing everybody? I think you're going to see a pass right here. They, they like to go down in the seam. Oftentimes to, to Jaro or could Million. Be a, could be an RPO with a little slant over the middle. And in trouble, rolling out and goes down the middle and it's overthrown and incomplete. And probably Jaro's going to have to come in to kick the field goal after that play right there, Coach. And uh, for many years, no such thing as a field goal in high school football. You know, yeah. nobody kicked field goals. You had the straight-on kickers, and now, you know, you got the soccer uh, people that could really wind the ball up and hit, kick it on down the field on kickoffs, punts, or uh, field goals. And right here, you know, maybe a little different situation because that hash is wider than college. is a lot wider right. than the professional ranks. 25-yard attempt. Right hash, as you said. And we have a whistle. Not sure what's happening here. Maybe resetting the ball. I, th I think the <laughs> ball may have been improperly set. I think they're moving the ball up about half a yard for the uh, Gators. I, I love that. That line judge said we need to move the ball six inches here. Yep, and now they're setting up for a 24-yard field goal. I don't think this is going to affect Gyro any. Holder is Lane Swanson, and it's up. 
And it looks good. And it's good, and it's 10 nothing. and we're going to take a break with 9-12 left to go before half. Santa Ma 10, EA 0. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Walk-Ons, We Live for This, Glaze, Heating and Air, SKR Construction, Austin Fire Systems, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. It's 10 to nothing. Santa Ma with the lead. Trying to go 6-0 on this young season as they lead East Ascension in the district opener for both teams in District 5, 5A. Jeff Borsch along with the coach, David Swacker and Troy LaBeouf as Jaro will attempt to kick off over to East Ascension and try to get into the end zone like he did last time and get the touchback, which is so important here in high school football. You know, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, what what uh, Coach Lee is thinking they need to do offensively, you know, because they 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 have very good running backs. The quarter, quarterback, in fact, two quarterbacks that they have are uh, – very efficient, yeah. and uh, so I think you're going to have to get a mixture of the run and the pass and, and let his athletes be able to make some uh, things happen offensively. On the other side, Sanamal seems to be doing uh, a decent thing of holding up, uh, not giving up, but one or two uh, fairly long plays, and uh, been successful. And speaking of successful, so far it's been a successful night for Dutchtown over in Walker. They lead 13 to nothing in the second quarter in their district opener, Dutchtown at Walker. Here is Santa Ma at East Ascension. And quarterback is going to be dropped after having trouble getting the snap. That was number 90, Cohen Rock. Coach, I think those snaps have been low all night so far out of the shotgun. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to just tell you, You're right, 90 on that rock. Outstanding job, kind of get back there with the ball. Yeah, those snaps have been low. You've seen, you've seen Browning almost have to take a knee multiple times now. Yeah. And, and last week, listen to the game, I think the announcer said there have been 20 snaps over the quarterback's head. And, of course, most of them were against De La Salle. So we have a, uh, officials have stopped play because I believe they're resetting the game clock the, the play clock as it was off and now it's reset at 25. Well, it's supposed to be a 40 second deal and then if there's a penalty or something like this then it of course it goes to starts at 25 seconds. So clock not running the play clock that is let's see if it's going now now it is so it's working. And there's a handoff and decent yardage on second down. But that Santa Ma defensive front seven holding their own, Coach, and it's third down and long for well, the Well, they Spartans. are, and, and this is something that, you know, as an offensive line coach, I just don't like to see the quarterback have to do this. Bent, he has to catch the ball bent over and his head's down. And when your head's down, your eyes can't be on what you're supposed to be looking at. Right. You get distracted. I can I can see that for sure. That was Washington on the carry. Tried to get a few. It's third and long. And shotgun, decent snap. Pass. Caught. That's Mitchell. Breaks a tackle. Nice spin move. First down and then some. And breaks tackles all the way to the 44. And he's the one who didn't get that ball on third down on the previous drive. He makes some men's right here, Coach. Very much so. Coming in to watch the drag across there. Great pass protection there by the offensive line. Catches it, makes a, nice, a couple of athletic moves right here. and picks up an extra 10 or 15 on the play. So probably the best offensive play of the night for East Ascension. 
Um, and I believe there's still a problem with the uh, play clock as it's at 14 right now. Now they're resetting it. So just having some problems with that, that's what's uh, causing these delays. With and uh, I can just tell you, they're not going to problem. Those officials are not going to sit there and worry or wonder because I think we've had some problems the first two games of the year with the 25-second uh, clock. And uh, that guy that's in the center field, he's going to raise that hand when he gets that 10 seconds for each quarterback. So that's your deep judge, backfield judge. It's just waiting, and the play clock has begun. And on first down, Washington hits a pile and driven backwards for a loss. And I believe down there at the bottom, that's the number 86, Cameron Hill with the tackle. So you see the ball right there. Just, that defensive line is uh, playing strong. Coach. Well, they, they, they're not probably the biggest, but they are quick, they're strong, and they're backed up by a nice group of linebackers. It's second and ten. Compared to the season that they had last year and compared to the team that they have last year, they're, they look much stronger, much more competitive, and that's indicated by their 5-0 and record. Pass complete to Chasson on second down. He's going to get five, and then he's pushed back. Not quite to midfield, but it's going to make it third and manageable. As you see some pushing and shoving there. What you might expect in a rivalry. Well, you get that Chasson catches it. The big thing right there is we'll give you four yards or we'll give you five yards, but you can't let them get any more than that. A good job of tackling on the outside by number uh, 36. Yeah, that was a good job by Caleb Ricks playing that cornerback spot. He's on Chasson again. Low snap, but pass right there and caught. Nice one-handed catch, breaks a tackle. This is Washington to the 20. Out of the backfield with the catch and a first down. What a throw. What a throw by Brown. And watch this with a little bit of touch on it. Nice grab right there by Washington. A little zig move. And uh, able to pick up a big first down right there for the Spartans. Ball of the 21, not quite into the red zone. And this is what we're talking about, Coach. It's 5-0 and versus 1-4, and but these two teams a lot closer than their records would indicate as East Ascension driving, trying to get this into a three-point game halfway through the second quarter. Play fake. Fade to the end zone and turns around, but not quite there. Ja'Cory Mitchell couldn't make it to the corner. Good coverage by number seven, Braxton Spike. Second down. Well, basically, you got a fade route right here. You're throwing to the pylon over there. You're running to the pylon, and it just got off track just a little bit right there. They had him, but just got turned around. I think he was looking for it over the other shoulder and had to make the correction but could not get to the ball. Have to get to the 11 for a first down. It's second and no, 10. No safety in the middle, Jeff. Yep. Here they come. Pressure rolls to his left. Good awareness, but there's a flag. It looked like Browning had a chance to uh, make something happen right there if he could have could have gotten the, the play to continue, but let's see what they call. So, ball start. Second and 15. That's going to hurt the Spartans right there. Yeah, you, you, you talk about being, you know, one and four and five and oh and stuff like that. There's some, you know, of course, you're scheduling. No, there's a lot of things that matter right there. But this is one of the big things right here. You know, you've had one situation where the Gators did score and had to kick, but they got three points out of it. So here in this situation, the Spartans got to be able to do the same thing. Pressure rolls right. He's got room if he can do it, and he does complete it. Good job. And that's going to make it third down and about eight as the catch made on the far side of the field. Browning, watch, watch the running, the little sidearm throw kind of on the run. Nice chunk right there. I believe that was Dumas with the catch. So they get to the 17. Make that the 18. It's going to be third and seven. 
inside of five minutes now to go before halftime. EA trying to get on the board for the first time tonight. This is their best drive of the night so far. Well, you got a bunch package over there into the sideline. I'm thinking uh, they're going this way. Shotgun and another whistle. And it's going to push them back again. That's twice on the same series of downs, Coach. I hear your exasperation right there. Well, as an offensive line guy, I just, uh, you know, it, maybe the quarterback needs to be a little louder. I, I look at every phase of this deal. Quarterback needs to be a little bit louder. Get the play. Don't put him in a predicament where he has to hurry. And then when he's sitting there watching and it looks like they're bringing the house, you know, I, I got to have the right play and, and it got to do a heck of a job right here. And they're on the right hash, and that's where the Santa Mar crowd is, so that might be affecting them as well as a flag comes down again. And I think this is going to come back as well. But look at the effort by Browning. That's very impressive to get close to a first down. And now a second flag may have come down, as I believe you may get a penalty from an offensive lineman complaining about the penalty, the original penalty. Let's see. They have a hold. And did they did they call a second penalty? No. Or maybe they called two for two well, offensive holding calls right there. But it looked like one of the players was complaining, and it looked like they may have thrown another flag, but they did not. Well, Browning, that was a special play right there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the effort was outstanding. Uh, put, putting them in a predicament where it now, now you're going to be out of basically field goal range. You're right. They have to get maybe half of this back to get maybe close to the 20 and make it a, a potentially manageable field goal. Pressure, pass, overthrown, trying to get to Brennan Thompson out the backfield. And that's going to stop the clock at 354. This is probably a situation where you got to go for it, but they have to get to about the 11 for a first down. It's going to be fourth down and what, about 22? It's amazing. The, the Gators, what they've done to us with that orange. Yep. I can't see the down box. No, I don't even know where it there. is. I don't even know where it is. I, I'm, you know, you've been reading off the scoreboard. I'm trying to use my old eyes here. Yep. Scoreboard where they have honored Glenn Dorsey here tonight oh, as we have a whistle. And at halftime, we're going to have an interview with Glenn Dorsey, who was honored before the game. And so that's going to happen after the band plays at halftime. Right now, we're going to keep it here, and let's talk about some of the games that are happening in district tonight and last night. Now, already Live Oak with an upset over Denham Springs. The team that went winless last season beat one of the district co-champs. Dutchtown at Walker, it's 20 to nothing right there. Dutchtown with the lead. And then right here, Santa Mar leading 10 to nothing in the second quarter against And look, that's, that's, you know, Denham Springs, uh, the Coach Beard was at Live Oak. Yep. And now... Uh, Seth was telling me, Seth Babin and uh, the Denham Springs coach and the Live Oak coach were all teammates at Southeastern. Oh, really? So they're all buddies and everything else, and that they're kind of rotating between the two right there. And uh, because Live Oak, had, I think it only won, what was their record on the year? They won two or three. Yeah. They have a new coach. Their coach got um, dismissed after the season. They didn't score a point against any of the teams in Ascension Parish last year. So congratulations to them. They've got to be proud. They've improved a lot already. Well, you got two two safeties deep. Browning looking around. He's got a throw, and it's overthrown. As it looked like he was trying to get it to Oob, number 16, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. And now Santa Mar gets a decent field position. They're past the 30 already. So, very good job there uh, by Coach Thomas's defense. And both ben, times that ben, they started at past the 30, they've gotten points. So, that's probably the th second or third big play that EA's had and no points out of those big plays 
right there. And when it came down to it, the defense did an outstanding job. So let's just see what happens with these uh, right under four minutes. And on first down, the handoff goes to Tyree Williams. And I think the difference so far tonight, I would say, is execution. EA has a couple of dropped interceptions. They have some offensive penalties that put them in a hole, and I think that's why you have the difference so far tonight. And, uh, you know, last series, there's no doubt, you know, when something good would happen, they got two or three of those five-yard penalties and then a ten-yard penalty for holding. So, you know, you can't, you can't have that and try to go in the plus direction. And second down pass. On the far side, that is pass intended for I think that was Jaro, the intended receiver. They're going to call it incomplete. It's third and ten. And you need a three and out right here, Coach, because you still got three minutes. EA could get the ball and do something with it and get back within a score before halftime. Well, number uh, three for East Ascension uh, goes in the game. Defensive back, Brennan Thompson. Yep, the two-way guy. Also the running back. Man-to-man -man on one side. Looks like uh, some type of zone on the other. And the screen pass set up. And that's Jaro. Oh, what a move. What a cut and tries to get downfield. I think he's going to be a yard shy of the first down, fourth down, though. That is that's a good job putting his foot in the turf and making that cut right well, there. What an effort right there by Jaro. Plant. Get up in there. Stanger does a good job on the tackle there, along with uh, number 42. And so I believe actually the clock has stopped, and so I believe a timeout has been called by East Ascension. So let's go ahead and throw it to the field. How about a blast from the past, folks? A legend at East Ascension, former EA coach from 1996 to 2006, 11 season, Coach Billy Beasley. Coach, you're looking great. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm just happy to have the opportunity to come back and visit with some uh, some players and visit with uh, Glenn Dorsey here and see a lot of old faculty and coaches. Before we talk about Glenn, let's talk about the memories you have of this series. This is a b unbelievable to see the amount of people that are here and just the emotion and both schools just coming together for this. You wouldn't believe I had 14 more years to go to my other coaching friends and in places and talk about uh, the battles uh, from between EA and uh, Santa Ma, as well as just the community and how it came together to support these two teams and uh, in the two schools. I, I, I told stories all the time. If you ever have a chance, come out and see this. This is something to be a, uh, be a part of, and I'm just proud and happy I had a chance to be a part of it. You mentioned Glenn Darcy. Talk about Glenn, what, what he's meant to the East Ascension program. You know, uh, coaches would always call me up and say, well, how good is Glenn? I said, well, I really don't know how good he is. I just know he's better than anybody else on the field. Uh, super person, uh, always a better person than he was a football player, which I'm really proud about that, and I know his mother is, and uh, I've just talked to him. He's got a great wife and kid right here, so it's good visiting with him. Coach, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for all you did for East Ascension, Ascension Parish. I know they, they miss you around here, man, and you, you now you're retired and enjoying life. Absolutely, and uh, you know, I, I enjoyed my days here, and I'm glad I was willing to just go to some place and that I didn't have a didn't know anybody. Didn't know anybody. And somehow uh, it worked out for me for 11 years. So I appreciate it. Former coach Billy Beasley, he's Ascension, enjoying life now. But he's an EA sport legend. Guys, back to y'all. So now back to the action. And thanks a lot for that great interview, Troy LaBeouf. And on second down, not much. Trying to get out of that hole at the one-yard line. That was an amazing punt, an amazing effort to get that ball out of the end zone, Coach. And uh, you you saw they had two, two officials right on the goal line. I thought it, that ball kind of snuck in there, and we have it right here. I thought when it crossed that plane of that goal line, it was in the end zone. It was I, he was right there, and I think that was Trabo. Because Braxton when you score Trabo. a touchdown, you reach the ball over the goal line, it's a what? 
That's a touchback usually. Well, it's a touchdown if you go on the other way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the ball goes across it in the air without touching it, but it broke the plane of the goal line, yeah. that it, should be a uh, touchback. So but hard to see from that angle because we have, of course, the, the vantage point of about the 50-yard line, so it's hard to tell. But we are 159 away from halftime, and Santa Ma is one play away from getting the ball in good field position if they can make a stop right here. Shotgun and a little swing pass caught and into the end zone as a touchdown by number 36, Caleb Ricks. And talk about jumping a play and reading it right there. Quick swing pass, and it's 16 to nothing. Wow. Nearly picked that. And he had to go like a foot, I think, to walk in the end zone right there. And he might think this is the easiest thing I've ever done. But I'm telling him it's probably the most important thing he's ever done right here. So it was about a two-yard interception return. You see Mitchell right there in frustration. So that punt that was down at the one-yard line pays a lot of dividends right there as Jaro is going to come and attempt the extra point. And it's good, and it's 17 to nothing. 154 left to go. Santa Ma with the lead. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Looking for an extraordinary education opportunity? Introducing Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where you can earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree from River Parish's Community College at the same time. Experience the best of both worlds as high schools seamlessly blend with college coursework in a rigorous yet supportive program. Yet stay connected to your home high school through clubs, organizations, and sports. And here's the best part. Students pay no tuition or textbook costs. Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where your future begins today. Santa Ma strikes fast after the punt down at the one. You have a two-yard interception return by Caleb Ricks for the touchdown, and now it's 17 to nothing. East Ascension will get the ball, but they are in shock here at home against their rival from down the street at Santa Ma High School, and you look on the far side, and there's so many people out there just lining the side. I, I, I'm really wondering if all those people are in line at the concession stand or the restroom. Well, because there's a lot of them that are just standing there <laughs> cheering on their team. But, yeah, the lines are probably pretty long with that crowd. That's as big a crowd as you see out here. And the kickoff is short. Taken at the nine. I believe that's Mitchell. Breaks a tackle in this trip from behind at the last second. Number 47 could have saved disaster that was Carson Sheets with the tackle and well right here he is close to be getting the big play right there and yep gets tripped up 17 to nothing and I Santa think, Ma with a statement in this first half coach yeah and I'm gonna tell you I, I have mixed emotions right here what coach Lee should do I, I just know if you just hand the ball off, it's almost like a defeatist attitude, but you also got to be thinking about your quarterback who just threw a pick six. Yep. And Santa Ball gets the ball to start the second half. You kind of have to get points right here, I would think. Shotgun low again, picks it up. And that's going to be a big loss as... That's the uh, other quarterback, Caden Gotro, right there, who was tackled by Caleb Ricks, the guy who had the pick six. This was the last year, just a serious problem last year for East Ascension. For anybody that is uh, snapping the ball uh, or getting a snap. Actually, I think that was Anthony Salzarulo that got the tackle. So Gotro is now in at quarterback. And that's Ty's Washington not getting much. And so it's third down and a lot inside of a minute. 
And at the half, don't forget, we're going to have performances by the band. Troy LaBeouf's going to have an interview at the half with Coach O, David Oliver, who is very happy with his team's performance, I'm sure. And we'll have a halftime interview with the man of the night, Glenn, Glenn Dorsey. Dorsey. So 33 seconds left. And that's Taj again. And he's got a hole, but he's going to be about five yards shy of a first down. And so Santa Ball with one timeout left. Doesn't look like they're going to choose to do anything with it. 17 seconds left. And so it's going to be fourth down. Wouldn't I'm, I'm surprised you're not going to force him to punt right here. But it looks like the clock's going to run out. Five, four, three. And we're going to go to halftime with the road team up 17 to nothing over the home standing EA Spartans. A bit of a surprise. Expected a closer game here at the half. But right now, we're going to take it onto the field with Troy LaBeouf. Here with Coach Oliver as we head into halftime, 17 to nothing. The Gators lead the Spartans in a series that we know is unbelievable. Coach, your defense has been great. Caleb Ricks with the pick six right there. Talk about the defense first. Uh, defense has been solid all night. I love our team. You know, we just play hard. There was a great hustle play on a big, long punt where we downed it at the one that put us in that position. And those are the type of plays that are putting us ahead tonight. Coach, your quarterback, Coach ba uh, Babin, you know, he hadn't played most of the season. He'd been hurt, but he came out smoking on the first drive. He looks good. Yeah, we, now we just need to finish this game off and uh, get ready for the second half. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Coach David Oliver, 17, 17 to nothing. They lead the Spartans. The Gators lead the Spartans as we head into the half. We'll sit at the break. Don't go anywhere. Halftime show coming at you on Rev. Looking for an extraordinary education opportunity? Introducing Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where you can earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree from River Parish's Community College at the same time. Experience the best of both worlds as high schools seamlessly blend with college coursework in a rigorous yet supportive program. Yet stay connected to your home high school through clubs, organizations, and sports. And here's the best part. Students pay no tuition or textbook costs. Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where your future begins today. Lamar Dixon's role from an entertainment standpoint is to be an economic engine for South Louisiana and Ascension Parish. To create an environment that people don't have to really leave their home in South Louisiana to have a world-class entertainment value. The partnership between Lamar and Rev has been a seamless marriage that I don't know how we lived without. And really knew what they were talking about and took the time to learn what we did instead of just sell us a product. I knew that that was going to be our, our company for life. I highly recommend Rev Business. We just moved, so there's millions of people. Dahlia's in bloom, over nine acres. When we started, we grew a quarter of an acre. Now I'm taking on new products on the regular. We always dreamed of having this property, so. I want to make my yard look as beautiful as largemouth bass. Yep. We've got tons of them, don't we, buddy? There are millions of ways to make the most of your land. How will you make the most of yours? Come see us at Ascension Equipment for John Deere sales and service. Save more today and mow tomorrow. Pico Builder Supply, your one-stop lumberyard, provides an extensive selection of quality building supplies for your new construction and remodeling. We offer computer-aided estimating of your building and remodeling plans, as well as blueprint copies. From humble beginnings to becoming the industry leader in Gonzales and beyond, Pico proudly supports our local community because we believe in giving back to those who have had a hand in our success. Let the experts at Pico Builder Supply help you with your new project today. This baby will get your heart racing as much as your slick new devices do. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet, all the time. Build your plan at Let's Rev.com. Let's Rev. 
Internet speed so fast, you're going to need seatbelts for your sofa. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet, all the time. Build your plan at Let'sRev.com. Let's Rev. This. This is a walk-on athlete. They push harder and put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with a taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons, we live for this. Find it move and he didn't grow it two years, so he just leave it alone. Uh, I 
told him when I went and saw him, I said, I don't care what you got to do. Get it oh, they, say that, they say that. I've never had it, but they've never had it. Maybe it always hooked it on. I'm telling you, I had it with more cereal. It was a little cereal, but that was much to that cookie. It was bad. We now welcome our sparkling Spartanettes to the field. Tonight our ladies dance to that earworm we all love. You're about to get rickrolled cause we're never gonna give you up.
here with East Ascension, now Jersey retired, Hall of Famer. We'll talk about the other things after, but happy to have Glenn Darcy, man. Glenn, it's good to see you. How's it feel to be back to watch EA and Santa Mall play? Oh, yeah, man, it feels great to be back, you know, and you couldn't pick a better night than the biggest rivalry in the state. You know, uh, two communities coming together, uh, my family and friends are out here, and uh, it's a great night, man. They really put on a, a good show for me, man. Um, they invited a lot of my old coaches, a lot of faces I hadn't seen in a long time. Coach Billy Beasley. Coach Beasley, man. So uh, they really did it up for me, man. I really enjoyed it. And you got a 20-year reunion coming back, man. You're getting older now, playing a lot of golf now. But talk about, you know, you're out in Southern California. Talk about your family and everything. Yeah, man, uh, you know, my, I, I'm married now. I got my wife from Southern California. So we met when uh, I was playing for San Francisco and um, got a five-year-old son now. So California is home, man. You know, I come home to Gonzales and visit a lot. But, uh, you know, that's home, man. And uh, like you said, I got a new hobby at golf. You know, I, I golf every day if I could, man. Uh, I love the sport, so it, it takes up my time now, you know, so uh, it's a great deal. Well, the sport you were really good at was football. Talk about your time at LSU, man. You won a national championship, special time in the ring of honor, all that good stuff, one of the most decorated players at, at LSU. Oh, yeah, man. You know, that was some of the best times of my life, man. You know, we, we had so much fun. We worked really hard, but we had fun doing it, you know, and um, – being that I'm, you know, I'm a hometown kid and I still got to play in front of my family and friends. And when I was at LSU, I always felt like I was playing for the state. I'm from here, you know, so it meant a lot for me to be able to bring a national championship there, be a part of something special, you know. So, you know, college, I always tell people, college don't owe me a thing, man. You know, I had a blast in college, LSU, man. Former East Ascension great Glenn Darcy playing the Super Bowl with San Francisco. Came up a little short to the Ravens, yeah. but it was a, a great memory, I'm sure. Nine-year, ten-year veteran in NFL, came back, has gotten honored tonight at East Ascension, and he will never be forgotten, and he, he gives back to his school as well, man. Glenn, it's great to see you look great. Keep swinging the sticks, buddy. Oh, yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. I'm enjoying it, man. Guys, back to you on the booth. We are still about a couple of minutes away from the start of the second half, and I'd like to thank Troy LaBeouf for a great interview and it's great to have you down here on the sidelines for such a big game and uh, we're grateful for all of our sideline reporters here at Rev Sports. They've done a great job over the last couple of weeks and of course you can catch Troy next week. He's going to be in Donaldsonville for the play-by-play -play in the Donaldsonville E.D. White game while we'll be over at Santa Mall for Denham Springs at Santa Mall as I'm joined now by coach David Swacker who has been the winning coach seven times in this great rivalry and it looks like potentially if you just go by what we've seen in the first half we are well on our way to this series being tied as Santa Mall has the lead 17 to nothing and I'm not it's not a shocker that Santa Mall has the lead because we knew that EA was a good team and they'd be competitive and could even possibly win this game. But what's shocking is that Santa Ma is dominating this game, Coach. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to just tell you, I'm not going to say it's a surprise, but, um, you know, because I, I, I had the opportunity to coach Cooper Babin and Chase Kelly, uh, two very good athletes. Uh, Chase is a a uh, big contributor on the baseball team and uh, at the quarterback spot. But with Cooper coming back, you have to understand he's a 10th grader. Yeah. He's a 10th grader, just like uh, number one is Holiday for, for uh, or being Browning for East Ascension. And, um, you know, being able to, you know, you, you had a, an injury. And you, you have to be thinking about that when that ball gets back to you. Uh, I, I just think, you know, I, I know the score is 17 nothing, but I'm going to tell you a big factor in this game is I don't think our, the East Ascension quarterbacks have gotten many direct snaps. They're all to the left or low. I hadn't seen any high yet. Yeah. And I think that really affects the decision-making of a quarterback. Uh, and, look, let me just tell you, when you're out back there playing quarterback and you are you know that, you know, we suspensions, I mean, Santa Mar is going to have some people coming at you and you're going to have to get rid of it real quick. And then all of a sudden you look over here, you look down to catch it and you look up 
and the world has changed uh, tremendously. Right. So I just think that's a huge thing. But I do know this. East Ascension has athletes. Yeah. And those athletes can win games for you if you put them in the right position right there. And so I, I, I'd just like to see just exactly, you know, uh, what happens um, with uh, Taj Washington. Yeah. I mean, he's a guy that should be able to make some things. And, and if Gotro comes in, let's see what he does, you know, running the offense. But you saw that he had the same problems. I don't care if you put Joe Namath in there. If the ball's at, at his ankles, he's not going to make plays for you. You're absolutely right. You know who Joe Namath is, huh? Um, I believe he won a game or two. <laughs> and the kick will go to East Ascension to start the second half, and that's taken at the five and – Hit right away. Great collision there. Job, Good job by number 42 on the Santa Ma side. Easton Humphrey with the tackle on the returner. I may have misspoke at the end of the first half. I may have said that Santa Ma was getting the ball at the end of the first half. Uh, it's East Ascension with the ball in the second half. You saw Humphrey down on the ground there for a moment, but he, uh, he jumped right up. Well, uh, I, I think about five people had to get off of him uh, yeah. for him to get up, and so – uh, nice little start. A good effort there by East Ascension coming out, and Santa Ma did a good job as far as doing uh, coverage on the uh, kickoff team right there. And here the uh, Spartans start the second half, uh, first and ten from right around the twenty yard line. And so the quarterback is Gotro with the pitch and some room to run. Breaks one tackle and out of bounds, and a late flag may get an extra 15. As it looks like that's number 38, who may have made some uh, contact out of bounds. Anthony Salzarulo on the running back, Thompson. I, I like the play thought right here. Not a whole lot of yards has been getting, you know, in the rushing game between the tackles. So you go outside, you know, Santa Mon misses a tackle out there and uh, you got good athletes on the outside that can block for you mm -hmm. and you want to run that play toward your own sideline so that when you get that late hit out of bounds everybody's <laughs> campaigning for it right and boy they, they cut this field down quick yep they're at midfield Gotro good snap and dancing around maybe gets a yard before number 44 gets in there Thomas Leonard and I believe that's also 32 in there as well. Damon Smith on the inside. So it's going to be a gain of one, second and nine. Ball on the Santa Ma side of the field. Only, I believe, the second time that EA has gotten into Santa Ma territory. Second and nine with 11-10 left to go. Good snap again. Quick pass. And that nearly picked off. I, the closest guy to that pass was Caleb Ricks, and uh, he's already done his damage for tonight with the Rick, Rick, Rick says, uh, uh, I need you to throw it a little bit. You know, uh, whatever you had right there, uh, your your wide receiver there, Chasson, he just looked like he ran a slant and kind of stopped. Yeah. And uh, the th so the throw was right there by Gotro. It's third and nine. Good snap, rolls out. Will he run? Yes, he will. Not going to get there. It's going to be about five yards shy. And on the far side of the field, about ten yards behind the line of scrimmage, you have a flag being thrown at the end of the play as you have contact between a DB and an offensive lineman. That, that might be an offsetting type of thing. Let's see what the call is going to be. If it is, it's fourth down. Well, that's uh, Ja'Cory Sanders, a cornerback for the uh, Gators. And I think that was Bryson Martinez. Unsportsmanlike. Only on the Spartans. Oh, no, they, they, did they call it? I, I both that ways. That. Yeah, they did call it both ways. Now, watch what the White Hat's going to do. Men, I'm here to officiate this game. Yep. And it's either going to be with you or without you. No foolishness. Come on. 
This game's this game is such a great rivalry. Let's not spoil it with some sloppy and silly nonsense out there, right? Good play by the official here. Yep. So 79 right there. And that's Aiden Joseph. You saw him in the middle of that. So it looks like after that, it's going to be fourth down as the offsetting penalties do not matter. As it happened after the play anyway. And it's going to be a punting situation. I guess your best option here is to get Ramirez, who's already pinned one down deep inside the 10. See if he can do that one more time right here and see if he can get better field position the next time you head out there, Coach. A lot of people come on and off that field for both teams. It's a three-score game, but it's not crunch time yet. You still have some time to get that one score and then make it interesting. And it's going to be taken at the 20. Good job. That's Raffray getting up there and fielding that punt. I believe that... EA was going to assume that Santa Maul was just going to let it roll, but Raffray did when he grabbed it. Low kind of line drive with a little medium bubble on it. Raffray does an excellent job. Now watch where he catches this. He catches it right there at the 20. He's to the 25, 30, and up to the 36-yard uh, line. So a nice return. Basically, it's almost where the Spartans had the ball. They've had the ball. They've started – at this in this area about three three or four times so far tonight they've had good field position all night first down hand off the craft trying to make yardage but good job by the east ascension defense you see number 42 in there on the tackle for the spartans that's marvin ragus and a couple of other spartans getting in there as well so we got an injury on the field and we'll keep it here while they take care of the injury. And uh, we talked about it at, at the end of the half. We talked about where we're going to be next week. Let's look at that schedule for East, East Ascension. Well, not East Ascension, for the, uh, for the Rev Game of the Week. Got caught there. So let's look at the Rev Game of the Week schedule. And you see right there, Denham Springs and Santa Maw. As you look at the deck games in 5-5A as well. Dutchtown at Live Oak, that's going to be a Thursday night game. EA is going to go to Walker, and then you have Denham and Santa Maw. As Santa Maw, if they can win here tonight, they got a chance to start 2-0 in district before they get into the game against Dutchtown in two weeks from now. Well, I, I was, you know, wondering just exactly, you know, and, of course, the Dutchtown game is not over with yet. I was just kind of wondering just exactly – because that's just something you don't see in football in high school. Two games missed. Yeah. You know? And it looks like they just uh, basically picked up where they left off. The injured player was Caden Womack. He's taken into the tent. And pressure gets away, and now there's room and a flag. So this one probably coming back. I, I believe that. Santa Maul has won the penalty battle as East Ascension's committed a lot more penalties tonight, but this is going to be a big one right here, perhaps. Well, it's, if it's holding, we already went over that, that uh, you start from the line of scrimmage and it's going to be a 10-yarder. So looks like they're starting to move back, so it's going to be first and 20. As you said, holding is now assessed from the line of scrimmage, not at the spot of the foul, correct? Can, can you imagine if... They were 10 yards behind the line, and you got a holding back there. You got a little cup protection, defensive end rushes. You take care of him, block him, hold him. Then you go 10 from that point of action right there. That would be a 20-yard penalty. Not fair in football. You're right. I think this is more, more fair all around. And the quick pass caught. Tried to bubble screen, no bubble as the catch is made. And then the that quick tackle by Shaquan Quan Isom as the catch. Good job by uh, East Ascension pursuing out there to get to him. Watch the pursuit. It's not going to be just one or two people. Nice little throw out there. That's Tobias Levy with the – So you right, have no, four, excuse me, four Spartans Johnson. right there on that tackle. 
Timothy Johnson with the catch, number 84. So it's uh, third and 21? Yep. Hmm. Call your third and 21 play right here. Hand off up the middle and look at Isom. Isom dominating this series of downs for the Spartans. He's fired up, trying to get his team fired up, trying to get the crowd fired up. It's a little quiet on the East Ascension side right now as they trail 17 to nothing. But they're going to get the ball back, and they're going to get oh, decent look at field the job position. job right there. Yep. Unblockable right there. Is that Micah Hill? No, that's, nope. that's no, Isom. That, that's uh, Isom. Jaro to punt. Pressure. No block. And a neutral bounce to about the 45-yard line. So, so, Coach, they they lose a little bit of field position, but it's still manageable right here. I believe they were punting from about – from a, they were punting from the Santa Moss side of the field. They're not quite to the Santa Moss side of the field right here with 8.09 left to go in the third quarter. So now you see – it's crunch time right here. It's, it's about time that you get some points on the board. And so the offense, let's see what kind of urgency they have right here. As they just have to, they just have to get points to try to change momentum right now. So you still see Gotro, a quarterback, shotgun, setting up the screen. And it looked like Thompson wasn't ready for it as it hit him in the body. Well, you know, a good job right there by 38. Salazaro. So look, he uh, it it might have been a man-to-man -man situation. He's right there. Yeah, I think the back. I think Thompson was ready, but then he saw Salzarulo cross the route. And on second down, screen to Thompson. And they're going to say he got out of bounds, broke the tackle. But his foot went out of bounds, and the ball will be at the 48. What, watch this right here, Jeff. Yeah. Watch right here. Two guys, two guys got him pinned. You can't go anywhere. Let the sideline be one of your defenders right there. Excellent job on the tackle. And so we have another break. Right now, um, it looks like there's a injured Gator on the field right at midfield. And now let's look at the rest of our schedule here on Rev TV. As Coach, you and I are going to get a good one, Denim at Santa Ma. And then Troy LaBeouf's going to be in Donaldsonville for the E.D. White Donaldsonville game. And then you got a really good one in two weeks potentially, Santa Ma at Dutchtown. Right now, both teams are undefeated and winning. So that could, be a, that could be potentially an unbeaten matchup right there. As you see, it's going to be live streamed on Rev Sports 1. That's our game, gentlemen, at Santa Ma, and Edie White and Donaldsonville on Rev Sports 2, and, of course, replayed on Rev TV 4. And I could, I could testify to this. When Santa Ma got rid of this tall guy at, 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 at uh, head coach, that, gives, that got to be a really good rivalry between those two teams. Yep. Well, I did not help the cause. I know that. Well, I'll say this. Their coach is still tall. Yeah. More handsome on the sideline, right? The more there handsome coach, right? Oliver's done a heck of a job. Yep. Uh, and, uh, boy, uh, Dutch sound the same thing. You know, I, again, I have no earthly idea. Just exactly, you know, what the Dutch Town players and coaches were thinking, but it looked like they 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 stepped right up, and you know sometimes coaches get all messed up about Thursday night games, you know, um, homecoming games, stuff like that. So now it's fourth down after the incomplete pass, and the punt will be taken at the 21 and tackled right there by number 13, Traven Richardson. Senior defensive back as good punt coverage. And so this is our, this is some of the worst field position that Santa Moss had all night. You see a good punt right there by Ramirez. And a good job on well, the punt returner number two, Swanson. You know, you just think about how this game started with 
Sanamal going up and down the field and, you know, getting some scores in. I think right now East Ascension is in a little bit of a pressure mode right here, and they're getting after it at Sanamal in order to equal that energy. They're going to have to get after it. First down and pressure. Stanga got him. And a big sack on Babin. And Stanga comes from his strong safety spot. Watch him coming from the outside here. There he comes from the outside. Basically missed the block right there. Good job by Stanga. You know, been, been a starter for a couple of years now. Yeah, that's an eight-yard sack. Ball back to the 13. So he's second and 18 for the Gators. And I guess what you're doing right here with the 17-point lead, you want to be a little conservative. You don't want to commit a turnover. They're going to do the play fake, though, and pressure. And that's up for grabs. And incomplete as the uh, – they're, they're looking for a hold on the East Ascension side. They're not going to get it as Hobby was trying to plead his case. I thought case. I saw him out a, a hold right in here. Yeah. No. I guess that was okay. It's not egregious by any stretch. But East Ascension looking for any type of advantage they can get right now playing in a hole. And, you know, you got the middle of the field wide open with the two safeties deep. So now... Third down, Babin under pressure. He's going to hold on to it and just throw it away and get outside the tackle box. And no flags for grounding, apparently. So he did get out that tackle box and got it, I believe, to the line of scrimmage or very close to it. Fourth down, good defensive series right there by East Ascension. Well, smart play. And then... You can avoid getting hit right there, too, by the quarterback. You know, East Ascension might think this is a victory right here. You know, as far as yeah. forcing them. So we're going to get the punt, and then we're going to be joined by Troy LaBeouf on the sidelines with another interview as the punt by Jaro. Ooh, this is nice. Gets past midfield and rolls. And away from the returner inside the 30, flip the field. And right now, we're going to go to the field for Troy LaBeouf. Here with Principal Christina Carter, Santa Maria High School, first year principal, 11 years in Ascension Parish. How exciting was this week? How tough was it this week to keep the kids, uh, you know, you got to do some classroom work too. They do have to do some work, but EA Santa Maria is such a big deal. You really don't need to pump them up too much. Like they were excited and ready to go. Friday couldn't get here fast enough, I'm sure. It's been a long week, but we are excited. The kids have been ready for today, so I'm just hoping they do well. Homecoming was last week. How how awesome was that? So, I mean, y'all go homecoming, then EA. What are y'all thinking? It's been a long two weeks for the Gators, absolutely, but it is awesome to just see them having a great time. They dressed up. They were in spirit and everything, so that's all that matters. Talk about some other things going on in Santa Mar right now, academics, other sports. Sports, whatever you'd like to throw out there, let the folks know what's going on at Santa Maria High School. Well, we are awesome at everything that we do. Academics, extracurricular, dance, um, drones, all of the experiences that we give our kids. It is just awesome, and that's our goal, to give them experiences that will help carry them after they graduate. Now, you got a football player of your own playing middle school football for an undefeated lake team, I think. Talk about your son and the, uh, uh, the lake football team. Yeah, so my son plays football at Lake right now. He is number one Terrell Carter. Um, they are really doing great. The team is doing awesome. They've pulled out some really close victories, and so I just hope them good luck for the rest of the year. I was talking to Miss Christina. She's watching that clock. She wants that clock to get to zeros. Looking for a victory. We appreciate your time. We appreciate everything you do for Ascension your parents. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys for supporting us. Guys, back to y'all. So after a great punt, East Ascension driving downfield, gets past midfield, and as this play ends, you see multiple flags as it's kind of getting chippy out there as you have an injury at midfield and a couple of personal fouls going to be called. So we'll wait for the officials to sort this one out. But uh, we've seen a little bit more of this in the second half, haven't we, Coach? 
Yeah, and uh, I'm not going to say anything negative about it uh, unless right. it gets a, a little bit too much out of hand. The last thing you want is somebody being ejected. You know, I, I, I don't know. I just When I was looking at that, the plus was the running back. And I guess some offensive linemen drove the whole Santa Mar pile back for a seven-yard gain after the stop. And then, uh, I, I don't know, maybe there was some words said. I'm not real certain. I saw a push. I saw an East Ascension kid go down. So, penalty. We see the offsetting penalties. So, where will the ball be spotted? Looks like the ball's at the 42-yard line, and I think that's perhaps Salzarulo that's injured at midfield. But uh, they're tending to him right now, and so while we are while while we are tending to the injury, let's look at some of the notes from the series. Uh, East Ascension versus Santa Ma. And I want to bring up the fact that there's only been one shutout so far. Lyle Boudreaux providing us with that information. 1995, 28 to nothing, Santa Ma won. But you see the history and East Ascension, 22 wins. And you see Joe Clark, Van Lambert, Larry Dotry, Barrett Murphy, Billy Beasley that we heard earlier. John Lambert, Paul Bourgeois. Darnell Lee, and as you as you might expect, Van Lambert's the big winner so far in this series. Tell you when we got here, Van, they were they were very good, a power football team, and very successful. Low snap again, and they have trouble. And now, and you brought it up, Coach. You you, you can't execute when that ball is low, and you're looking up, and then three four guys are in your face. Well, and then I'm not sure if that was catchable or not. Yeah. But I just know this. Let's just check it out and see. And that's Browning back. That roll back there to it. Yep. That's Browning back in the game, replacing Gotro, who we saw in the first couple of drives in the third quarter. So you you basically are saying we need to get a first down in two or three downs here. And on second down, fumbled, picked up, and it's Gator ball as Browning is down at the 43-yard line. Don't see any flags, so it's going to be Gator ball. Let's look at the replay. Who made a big hit right there? Big spike right here. Number 13. Number 13, Spike picks it up. The tackle made by Braxton Trabo that caused the fumble. Oh, Tra- Trabo has been, been an it. outstanding linebacker for him. Right. Now they're tending to Browning, who has been injured. And, uh, you know, he's had some issues with that last couple of weeks. And while they look at him, let's go to the Santa Ma stats. And we're going to see a familiar face right there. I guess uh, joins uh, Doug Morrow as a winningest coach in this uh, rivalry. Um, I think there were a couple of those years, I believe. I'm not real certain. Uh, Beasley was the head coach. I think they moved down because when Dutchtown opened up, yeah, um, we, you know, we lost, I think, around 700 students. And I know East Ascension went below the whatever that magic number right. is around. They had dropped the 4A. Yeah. And uh, – <laughs> But I know one thing, um, you know, we, we had some really good teams there. We had the, all our coaches were on the staff, uh, you know, for for years. And, of course, our kids really uh, enjoyed this atmosphere, just like uh, they did uh, when we played Catholic High or, or anybody else in the district. So you see right there, David Oliver with a win tonight. That would be a three-way tie with seven wins as the wing is coaching this series. Of course, joining you and Morrow. So you'd be in, uh, you're going to be in the elite company with, with the big O uh, if they yeah. win tonight. Nearly picked. Oh, boy, that would have changed some things right there. That was uh, Jameer Smith, 94. Boy, he looked inside, saw the linebacker step up. Yes, pulled it and went to throw it. 
And, uh, well, I, I don't know if that was an RPO because I, don't, I didn't see a fake with the running back. But still a second and ten situation. But that's the third ball that, that East Ascension's gotten their hands on that they could not corral and get the interception. Second and ten, handoff, broken tackle, cutting outside, and good recovery there on the run by Tyree Williams. That's Isom. Isom's had a great second half, Coach, 34 for the Spartans. So you see breaks the one tackle, but then there's Isom coming, out, coming in and wrapping them up. It's going to be third down and long. It's going to be third and... Hey, you got seven offensive six. lineman, big 78, uh, leaving the field, uh, Thornton. Right. Lies it for Thornton. Million is in motion. Shotgun. Pressure. Nice spin move, but a screen is caught and a flag goes down as it's made by Tyree Williams. Uh, there may have been a, a, a lineman or two downfield. Well, if the ball's caught behind the line of scrimmage, you're all right. Let's see. Uh, you know, he might be saying the ball was not caught behind the line of scrimmage, and that would put your uh, lineman downfield. It was close. And, look, that's the umpire right there. He's, he's basically that's, – that's his job right there. If – it counts. It's a first down, and they may be explaining that to Coach Lee because he's already demanding an explanation, and he doesn't. I can't. I can tell by the body language there. You there. You, they 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 waved it off. So you. Uh, and, and look, that's why you're the coach, Coach. And that, is that what the, what that guy just did right there is okay. That ball was caught on the 47 yard line. It was right there, Coach. Okay. It was right there. It, it's hard to tell, but it, it was close enough, I suppose. Good job by the lineman getting out there, and uh, good job by the quarterback, uh, Cooper Babin, delaying that as long as you – still drifting back, getting that separation behind the defensive line and the receiver and the offensive lineman. So now we had a... That's a big play right there for the Gators. Oh, yeah. And the clock is continuing to run. And now with a three-possession game and 15 minutes left to go, the clock is starting to become a factor. Although we had a game in Denham last year, game played at Live Oak between Dutchtown and Denham, where it was 17 nothing, almost at this exact point. Dutchtown had the lead as a whistle and a flag goes down. Dutchtown had the 17-0 lead, and with this amount of time left, and Denham came back and won the game 21-17. Penalty against East Ascension, so it's going to be first and five. So it's not it's not critical time yet, but it's getting pretty close. But just a great dominating performance so far by Santa Mall. Well, you know, uh, I, I, from what I saw right there, it looked like uh, Santa Mall might have had a delayed snap count. Right there, that perhaps in the pass complete to Million, or is it? Babbitt's pass is complete. They're going to say yes. The the to million official comes in about ten yards and confirms. It'll be second down and four. So. They're going to say second down and four. That's a short gain. And Let's talk so, about this uh, offensive line for the uh, the Gators with uh, Jet Lemoyne, Seth Gidry, Cooper Cheatwood, Elijah Thornton, Dominic Vizzini. Boy, they are doing a heck of a job protecting uh, the Gator quarterback. Absolutely. Santa Maria trying to remain perfect on the season. A win tonight would get them to 6-0 and and the best record in 5-5A. And undoubtedly, we probably keep them in the top ten, if not the top five, in the power ratings. So 
What a difference a year makes. Looks like there's going to be a penalty assessed against. Uh, I think Santa. they're saying that ball was incomplete. Maybe. I know one thing. All you could do is move it back to where you started from. But if that's the case, it's pretty much where, where it is right now. Because well, there's a five-yard penalty, so it was first and five. The ball would have been at the 35-yard line. So they don't have to move the ball at all. Well, the, 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 the official, the deep safety uh, official comes in. Look, you want me to straighten this out for you? Right, this is what we got. Tells them everybody disperses. And so here we go. Cooper Babin has gone the distance. Up to this point, four receivers. Babin looking left. Now flushed. And taken down by big number 96, John Brown. And that's going to be a loss of two. Third and seven. So you see him getting flushed out the pocket. Good pressure. And then 96 comes in and wraps him up. That'll be a run right there, not a sack. So you see Kraft checking out, and you're going to get an extra receiver. Hell, let's see. You got three into the sideline, empty formation. I think maybe the first time they've done this tonight. And so the shotgun pressure rolls right. Deep and downfield, incomplete up for grabs, and complete goes to Timothy Johnson. So that's going to bring up fourth down. And it's going to be a punting situation. Probably probably not wise to go for it right here, pin the back. No, I mean, this is – remember, we're in the third quarter. Yeah. But you, you're approaching the fourth. And uh, you have a comfortable lead right now. You don't want to give East Ascension good field position. And we have a flag. Game has gotten sloppy here in the third quarter. It's slowed down a lot. Some issues with ball placement, some issues with penalties, some unsportsmanlike penalties, and just general sloppiness after a fairly clean first half. Well, something that I noticed in uh, some games last night is the Curtis and Holy Cross game. That must have been one heck of a game. I think it was 42-41. Right, that was, uh, I believe, Saturday night or something like that. Oh, nearly blocked. Isom nearly got his mitts on it, and it takes another great bounce, and they're going to down it inside the five again. And remember what happened last time they got the ball right there. And so right now with the Spartans in a hole, why don't we go ahead and take a look at East Ascension and their schedule this season and what they've done so far with the one and four start and where they stand for the rest of the okay, district. Okay, you tell me the name of the team. So Zachary. Zachary, all right. Zachary's number three in the, in the rankings. West Monroe. West Monroe, they, they are out of the uh, rankings now. Destrahan. Number two in uh, state, state uh, uh, winner last year. So then you have that tough schedule, but then Santa Ma, they're trailing tonight. Then they go to Walker. Then they go to Denham. Then they finish with home games against Live Oak. That's homecoming night. And then they get the home game at Dutchtown. But they have to get on the winning track if they want to make a, a dent in the postseason. they got to get, get something going very quickly here as the handoff goes inside. Right now they're on the outside looking in. They they have they played some pretty strong teams, but when you lose those games, you don't get as many points. Right now they're in the low 30s, I believe, in the power rankings, and you get I believe the top 28 make it into the postseason. Yeah, I think that's uh, it. If if they if they continue with it, you know, they just had the vote on yeah. that and, uh, to accept the definition. Right. So We're not a sports has academy. We're an English academy now. Yeah, exactly. And that's Gotro after the injury to Browning. And it's going to be a couple of yards shy completion for East Ascension to Ja'Cory Mitchell as we are approaching one minute left to go in the third quarter. And I'm just thinking of this Gotro kid. When I saw him against Zachary or West Monroe, you see where he threw that ball? He's like on the three or four-yard line. He was in the end zone. 
yeah. on, you know, let's say how, let's just say he had eight passes. Uh, he never had an opportunity to get out into the uh, where where you're not in the vomit zone of uh, having to get rid of the ball. Right. And a first down and a lot more. And that's big because we, we alluded to it, but we didn't, we didn't say it. But when East Ascension had that ball inside the five, last time at the end of the second quarter, they threw a pick six and changed the complexion yes. of this game. But they don't get it right here as Taj Washington gets the first down. So approaching perhaps the final play of the third quarter, and we're going to have another interview with Troy LaBeouf at no. the end of the third, so stay tuned for that. And shotgun pass caught, and that's Mitchell, and that's close to another first down. And the spot is, looks like it's enough. So it's first and 10, clock stops at 10 seconds. So well uh, designed play right there and good pass by Caden Gotro. And a nice job right there on the play action, fake right there, and uh, that defense, uh, uh, Braxton Speak. Well, uh, was backing up a little bit, playing uh, uh, the, the curl zone in the strong safety spot, and able to get that ball out there and turn up field for a plus game. There was some confusion. Looks like that's been settled. And they're going to get the halfback pass or the receiver pass, and that I believe the snap might have affected that a little bit as – the quarterback was the intended receiver from the pass from Chasson, and the clock stops at four seconds, was, so we'll get one more. It was disappointing right there because, again, the, the timing's off. Watch where the snap goes here. Down by the ankles, no timing. Quarterback throwing back to the quarterback. If that, all that would have timed out real well and Gotro gets down the sidelines, you might have a possibility of a pretty big play. Good coverage here by number 25, MJ Dunn. And there's some pressure and a sack. And the ball's on the ground, picked up. And it's going to be bad field position after the fumble, sack fumble, as we end the third quarter. And so with our score 17 to nothing, we're going to go back to the field and join Troy LaBeouf. 17 and nothing as we start the fourth quarter here at Spartan Stadium. Happy to be with Principal Lauren Avery of East Ascension. Third year as principal, 25th year in the profession. Congratulations on getting to that point. Thank you. It's been great. It's been great. Great 25 years. Talk about this week. You know, it's got to be tough on you, on your teachers, everybody involved. Just I think it might be tough on the whole community right now. <laughs> I mean, everything's set up all week. The kids are, are jacked up. Great ball game between these two. I mean, you come from an athletic family. Your dad was a coach, the legendary Van Lambert. How was it coming up as a coach's daughter? Oh, it, it was great. I have extremely fond memories of being on this field as a little girl and watching, you know, the Spartans play, the Spartanettes, the band. Um, it is a – I have great, great memories of all that. Yeah. Well, most people don't know you graduated from Santa Monica. I did. I did. I 1995. That's it. That's right. That's right. So you have a brother at Santa Monica? I have a brother at Santa Monica, a sister-in-law at Santa Monica. I have a lot of friends and family there. I actually started my career at Santa Mall, so um, I have some great memories of, of being at Santa Mall as well. I live in Santa Mall, so um, so yeah, I mean, it's a it's a typical, very uh, friendly rivalry that goes on between the Spartans and the Gators. You know, there's a lot of house divided that are around here, um, but it's great. It's a there's no toilet paper left in Ascension Paris. Probably no toilet paper left. You are correct. You are correct. Let's talk about some other things going on at East Ascension. Academics and this band is outstanding. Yes, um, so our band does a fantastic job of of, um, being part of the game they're not just you know it's not just a platform for them to play and while they are you know obviously fantastic musically um, they add so much to what is happening you know um, on, on the field and in every single game so we love having them we have two great band directors um, Charles Lee and David Gambino they are phenomenal cheerleaders dance team they, they set up the big tunnel for them to come out yes yes our yell leaders so you know we have about a hundred yell leaders that are out here and really take charge you know not just you know of the of a 
a, a setting at a football game, but really impact everything that happens on campus. Last question for you. No construction going on at East Ascension. That's exciting, but how tough it is to work around that. It is, but you know, I'll be honest, people have been great. Um, we have a really forgiving uh, group of uh, teachers and students, and any inconveniences that have come along, uh, they've been great with. So we're anticipating you know, a move-in for um, next school year, and we're extremely excited about that. One quarter to go here at Spartan Stadium, 17 to nothing. Principal Lauren Avery, thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you. Go Spartans. So fourth down in a punting situation after the incomplete pass. So Ramirez will try to pin Santa Ma back as it's a line drive this time. And it's going to be picked up and taken to midfield by Raffray. Very dangerous, but uh, but very successful. So good field position for Santa Ma. And as we start the fourth quarter and Santa Ma leading 17 to nothing, let's look at their schedule and let's look at them as they try to stay perfect on the season tonight. They're one quarter away from doing that. They've beaten Carver, Washington, Kennedy, who's in the top five of Division II non-select, ahead of a, uh, ahead of Lafayette Christian, as a matter of fact. Then Opelousas, they're really good. Big win yep. against New Iberia last night. Yep, and then you look at their schedule, and we'll talk about that. We'll bring the graphic up after this play again. And on first down, about four yards, as we see again, the schedule after tonight we have them for the game of the week in back-to-back -back weeks Denham Springs and then at Dutchtown then they finish at Walker or at home against Walker and then at Live Oak but a win tonight and they get to 6-0 and and they're they're flirting with a shot at a district title well you know I, I think you, you start winning in district and you know a lot of people say stuff about the the non-district schedule you start getting a little respect in the, in the polls and stuff. Absolutely. Now there's Kraft with the pitch out to Million and got blockers ahead of him. Good block by the quarterback to the 30. And down inside the 25. Make that about the 27. I'm going to just tell you, it is unreal how you can do this twice in one game. Good pursuit by the Spartans. Uh, Cooper, that was a pancake. That's what he's going to call it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and of course, you get it to uh, Jamaica Million, who uh, can get up and down that field pretty quick. So look how ha happy the, uh, well, the crowd in, in orange looks tonight. And I'm just kind of wondering uh, who's going to be out for quarterback the uh, rest of this game. Uh, for the Spartans. There's been a lot of damage to the quarterbacks tonight. Some injuries, some tough playing, and some sacks as, speaking of sacks, I guess we credit that one to number 94, Coach, on the D-line, Jameer Smith, as he gets Babin. And so that's going to bring up second down and a lot. As we're now inside of 10 minutes. Well, you, you know, uh, a little earlier, what was a good play for him was the uh, little screen to the running back into the sideline. Maybe it's a possibility here. So, second down, they have to get to the 17. They're at the 33, second and 16. I can do math. And there's Kraft trying to be chased down and is eventually... And that's a name that we've called a lot here, Jameer Smith, making his presence known on defense. So that's third down. And we have a whistle and we have an injured player. And so it's going to be third down and it's going to be about 13. And so with this injury, I'm going to go and take a look at Santa Ma and what they've done. They have a chance for their most successful season in years. Last year they made it in the playoffs just barely, and then they lost at Zachary. Before that, they made the regionals. They had a, they had a nice season at 8-3, and three, made the by-district round in 2020, missed the playoffs in 19, and in 18 they had the by-district game. I believe that up. That 2021 season, they beat H.L. Bourgeois in the playoffs, but then uh, I, 
weren't able to get any further than that. But uh, they're in a position, if they can stay undefeated here and then flirt with a or play or compete for a district title this season, they could get one or two home games, and that can make a big difference. Well, you know, it's going to – and, and, you know, I could say this as we're watching what we're watching. Yeah. I think for them, everybody's got to stay healthy. Right. And uh, they've had a unique situation where Chase Kelly comes in and leads them to a 5-0 and record. And I think Cooper Babbitt is only going to get better and better and better. Yeah. You know, each – because, you know, what I see is they have – a very good running attack, and they could be a great passing attack because they have a number of receivers that could be outstanding for them. Third and 13. And this looks like the traditional David Oliver Santa Ma team more and more as that pass is going to go away incomplete. And I guess uh, when you got a guy, even a, as a sophomore with Babin, this is a guy who eat drinks, sleeps, wakes up, eats breakfast, and it's all football in that household, right? Uh, there's no doubt about it. And so what are we looking at here? There's the discussion with the officials, and the offense is still on the field. I think they, they missed an opportunity right here. Now maybe they'll make something of it. Yeah. They're going to go for it on fourth down, which is interesting. Now we have another whistle. Don't know if this is – that doesn't the clock run out in there. Or no, there's, gonna, there's an official timeout. Maybe, uh, maybe another clock issue. Like I said, this game is kind of uh, slowed down a lot. With 9.03 left to go in the game. And for the Santa Juan side, they can't make this clock go any faster. That's what they're they're hoping for because right now with nine minutes left in a three-possession lead on East Ascension, they look to be in very good shape. But East Ascension has big play and big strike capability. They have a huge offensive line, and they got two really good running backs. Of course, their quarterbacks have been beat up tonight, so we don't know what's going to happen. And that's going to be interesting to see uh, just exactly because I could not find out who made the last throw before there was a change of possession. So now pressure again into the end zone and out of the end zone incomplete. So East Ascension will take over with decent field position, trailing 17 to nothing. And we looked at the last five seasons for Santa Maria. Let's look at the last five seasons for East Ascension while we have a chance as the possessions change. And they, they're regional winning first round games every season. But you look at the record, 6-6, six 6-4, and 5-4. Six, six and 5-4, four, and four. that's again because of that killer non-district schedule and it helps him late out later on during the season because you played so many good teams that you you it, it helps build your your competitive strength i guess you could say well you know here here's you know five years ago when they were in the quarterfinals you know i i just think that there needs to be a a a, 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 a simple formula that you, in scheduling Either hard teams, easy teams. I think that's Gotro. Yes, it is. On the men and on the run. So, doesn't get much, but they've, they've been under pressure all night. Part of it has to do with the low snaps, and part of it has to do with just good pressure by the Santa Maria defense. And last year, Santa Maria's defense gave up a lot of points, but tonight they're pitching a shutout against a pretty good team. So they have improved a lot. And they lost their best player to LSU, matter of fact. Second down, pressure, and he's going to run. He's got a first down. He's to the 50. He's to the 40 and down to the 36. What an effort. What an effort right there. 
And I hear flag on the play back at the 21-yard line. Look at that. It's coming back, Coach. And I, I think that's 79, Aiden Joseph, who's very upset. And he is talking to Coach Darnell Lee over at the 30-yard line. So he's obviously the guilty party. But yeah, let's see if we could see it. 79. Oh, he did grab a guy, it looks like, but that was well after the he had run past. But that doesn't matter if he does it, right? Yeah, good job right there by Gotro. There's Coach Oliver. So the big O trying to catch you, Coach. He's eight and a half minutes away. Hope he does that and he gets a lot further down the road. So with the ball at the 20, it's going to be second and 20. And I know what you're trying to say by that. You're, you're very humble about your own records, and so you like to see other teams. Other play, other coaches that you've that you've brought in, be successful as well. Oh, no doubt about that. You, yep. you know, you, you know. Some somebody asked me, says, "Who who who are you pulling for between East Ascension and I don't know Port Allen?" Mm-hmm. I said, uh, "Why are you asking such a question?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm pulling for East Ascension every week, except when they play the team that I'm coaching. And so the, the household is split, right? The household is split. As you see, Coach Darnell but, but, but if I was coaching, uh, you know, she, she would have to make a decision. Right. And yes. in, in case you don't know, Coach Swack, his wife, Tracy, was a longtime admin at East Ascension. So he's got split loyalties for sure. Yeah, but I like Ascension Parish to do well every week. Absolutely. You know, in all the sports. I mean, you know, you have to be very fortunate to have your kid go to school in Ascension Parish. Right. There's so many great things in this parish. And whether you're an adult, you know, trying to get a job, a good job, or whether your kid looking for great opportunities. There's so many good things going on in this parish. Yep. And that's why a lot of families are moving this way, and that's why they built Dutchtown, and that's why they built Prairieville, or they're building Prairieville High School. Absolutely. You know, and people are smart about how to to raise a family, and that's in Ascension Parish. So they were offsetting penalties right there, which we've seen a lot of. Some of the intensity in this rivalry is kind of spilling over, I guess. So third down and long, 18. And the pass is nearly picked off by number 36 for the Gators, Caleb Ricks. And so it's fourth down, and you pretty much have no choice but to punt right here. It's too early to to just give up on a fourth and long. Well, the, 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 odds, you, the odds are just so low. You know, you got the right idea there, uh, Jeff. You know, and Swanson's out for the So we'll get the punt, and then Santa Ma most likely will take over here with decent field position. And it's taken, and that's Swanson. But I think that I think that did he call for the fair catch? Well, number twelve, Luke Raffrey called for the fair catch, so it's a fair catch. I don't care if me and you catch it, okay? Right. So it's going to be Santa Ma ball, and with 7.54 yeah. left to go here in this game, Swack, I'm going to turn it over to your favorite part of the night, the middle school scoreboard. Uh, here we go. Games played uh, Wednesday. Santa Ma uh, Wildcats beat Dutchtown 16-2. to Boy, I went to a great one. Lake, they are on fire, beating Galvez 22-20, to and I think they're 5-0 and in the league. Bluff, two overtimes to beat Lori. Lori's got a couple of outstanding athletes. And Central, 28-24 to over Prairieville. So now it's Gator possession. 
Tyree Tyree Williams Williams with the carry. Short gain, and all they're doing is running clock right now, right, Coach? Running clock, and, uh, you know, the big thing is they picked up about three yards right there, and it seems like it's been forever since anybody's gained, you know, uh, three yards on a carry. Uh, And I'm just grateful for a couple of plays in a row without a penalty or confusion. And, you know, Cooper uh, should be looking for that guy, hand up. Means it's 10 seconds left. And Offensive line with a nice push right there. And that's Williams again with the carry, I believe. Kraft was injured on the previous possession, and I don't think he's come into the ball game since. So we're hoping he's all right. So it's third down with 6.50 left to go. Just the pacing of this second half has been unusual, yeah. and but and no points have been scored partly because of the the choppiness and and kind of sloppiness of this second half. But that first half was dominated by the Gators, and they're basically just trying to run the clock out and, and come away with a victory in the biggest rivalry here in Ascension Parish. Well, they're slowly they're slowly getting the play in. Takes a little bit more of the clock. I mean, just think, you know, once once the whistle blows on a tackle, you have 40 seconds to snap that. So timeout by the Spartans. And so right here, what we're going to do is take a look at the top 10 in 5A as we look at the rankings. And Edna Carr is now number one. Uh, Destrahan, one of the teams that defeated EA is number two. Zachary also defeated EA. They're number three. Rustin unbeaten. John Curtis, you talked about them losing the Holy Cross. They're number five. Holy Cross is at eight, which is always, I always think that's weird how that happens. I'm not understanding how how does Holy Cross win? Yep. Hey, Curtis uh, is still ahead of, but let me just tell you, Mm -hmm. kids and fans go berserk over this stuff. Yeah. And you know what? That, no no matter where you're at on this, uh, Jeff, this does not win football games right here. And John Curtis is going to be heard from later on in the season. They they won state last season. They win state 90% of the time, it feels like. Well, they got about 20-something of those uh, trophies. Yep. So now it's third down. Third down in about seven. Babin maybe setting up the screen, and it's caught, and it's a first down, breaks the tackle inside the 30, breaks another tackle, 25 to the 20, and that's Tyree Tyree. Look at him run. I mean, that was impressive. In the little old five yards from the sideline, great job there by the quarterback, delaying that throw as long as possible. And Tyree says... Watch me roll here. Absolutely, and uh, just hard running and without craft. As what was mentioned earlier in our group text from uh, Lyle Boudreau, our producer, the Santa Ma fans have not left at all. There might be more Santa Ma fans in the second half than there were in the first half. They're, they're, they're loving it so far tonight as you have an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against East Ascension. And things are just not going right at all for the Spartans tonight. It's just been a rough night for them. And it goes from bad to worse as now you're going to get first and goal. And Santa Ma trying to get a (laughs) touchdown that might give them an exclamation point. Six minutes left to go exactly, and there's Williams, and he gets a yard. The defense has played well here. They've, they've got a lot of pressure on the quarterback, but a couple of screens have kind of uh, been very timely and great calls by offensive coordinator Seth Babbitt. And, you know, you might want to bring up that uh, stat again of the only time in 40, 40, 
What are we talking about? 42? Uh, 44 if it happens. Yeah. Uh, this 44? Is, this, this, would be, this, would be a, this would tie up the series if the current result stays And the then same. also if the current result stays. And that's Babin. And the ball is out, but he's in the end zone before. And it's a touchdown for the Gators. And there's the exclamation point, Coach. And, and boy, you go go in that sideline, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of excitement both on the field and off the field, on the sideline and in the stands. He definitely, that, that ball was dislodged four yards into the end zone when, his, when he fell on it. Oh, yeah. So the extra point coming from Jaro, and that was that looked uh, not that didn't look very good at all. And so 23 to nothing, Gators 5-12 left to go in this game. You are watching the Rev game of the week. Looking for an extraordinary education opportunity? Introducing Ascension Public School's Early College Option Program, where you can earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree from River Parish's Community College at the same time. Experience the best of both worlds as high school seamlessly blends with college coursework in a rigorous yet supportive program. Yet stay connected to your home high school through clubs, organizations, and sports. And here's the best part. Students pay no tuition or textbook costs. Ascension Public School's Early College Option Program, where your future begins today. Twenty-three to nothing, Santa Ma with a dominant performance tonight, trying to get the uh, second shutout in this rivalry's history. The only other one, 1995, Santa Ma won 28 to nothing. And if Santa Ma had some doubters with that five and zero record, they're not oh, going to they have any doubt. doubters. They're not going to have doubters now after this. Absolutely. You know, and, and that should be not be a concern because the, the, the doubters don't play. No. Nope. And, um, well, you know, they, they have earned, you know, what they've done tonight. You know, the kick is taken at the five. And uh, so it's an offsides penalty against the Gators. But I, I hear people say, and you look at the schedule and the – and they say, well, compared to East Ascension, who have you played? You don't have any 5A teams in there. You're playing some teams from New Orleans that we, that we don't know about. But I'm going to tell you that John F. Kennedy is a very good football team. They are 4-1. and one. They have beaten Live Oak. They've beaten Terrebonne. They've beaten some good 5A schools. Mm -hmm. And Opelousas, they were in the top four in the power rankings in 4A last year. Those are two quality wins that – and you look at it and you're like, oh, who, who is that? Well, you better find out because yeah. Santa Maul is telling you who they were tonight. Yeah, and uh, some good points right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, But, you know, now all that's over with. You got yep. district. And uh, it's, it's huge. I think each and every week anybody could beat anybody. That, that's, I, that's just my thought. And another whistle. They want us to run out of things to talk about, Coach. But they don't know us very well, right? Uh, uh, the I'm just talking to. Uh, uh, so, Coach, there, we, uh, we may know the culprit now of all these things. Somebody's flying a drone around here or something. And the drone is maybe interfering. Whatever there you go. The drone needs to leave the stadium. Please remove the drone out the air and park it. Thank you. So there you go. Oh. Nolan, you are the king. I'm, I'm thinking I coached 44 years, and I've never heard that announcement. Mm -hmm. Well, we've, we've heard you drone before, <laughs> but we never heard about a drone. <laughs> Wow. Ah, uh, we love you, Coach. Wow. We love you, Coach. <laughs> Whoa, there you go. And there's a big return to the 45. Good job by number 80, 
Matthew Collins, senior wide receiver. I, I like the effort right there by East Ascension on that kickoff return. Yep. I mean, everybody's going full speed right there, especially that ball carrier. Outstanding job right there. So unless you get three touchdowns and three two-point conversions in the last five minutes of the game, Santa Ma is going to come away with a win that will tie this series. And Santa Ma's defense has looked very good. EA's had some problems offensively tonight, and Gotro is going to keep it, and he's got a first down. Trying to make this a game. Gotro's, I, I tell you what, I, I like his winning effort right here. And since he's been in here, he is really getting after it. Uh, I would I would wish he would get on the ground a little bit sooner. Uh, making one more yard uh, when you don't have to. You need to get on the ground and protect yourself. Yeah, especially with the injury to Browning. You don't know what's... Gators was uh, two safeties deep. 4.28 left to go. Time a big factor right now. Gotro throws out of bounds. Dumas, the intended receiver, and that'll stop the clock with four minutes and 20 seconds left to go. A win tonight for Santa Maria would get them to 6-0. and A loss by East Ascension would drop them to 1-5. and And we've talked about Seth Babin and the job he's done tonight. We haven't talked about Dwayne Thomasy one time. He deserves a little credit tonight, don't doesn't he? Uh, his kids have done a very outstanding job. Boy, they they have responded on every on on every play. Great job there by the offensive line. The ball's Ball. loose. And was that Rock? I believe maybe with the sack. And who comes up with the ball at the end? I see it on the replay. It's picked up by one of the big offensive linemen. Big 62. And the helmet came off. Flag on the field at the 35-yard line. Last we heard in Walker, Dutchtown was leading 21-20, to 20, so it's been a great game out there. Wow. So, Santa Ma, we talked about defensive coordinator Dwayne Thomasy. Let's talk about these guys again. Jai Joseph, Cohen Rock, Cameron Hill, Braxton Trabo, Damon Smith, Thomas Leonard, Anthony Salzarulo, Caleb Ricks, Ja'Cory Sanders, Lane Swanson, and Braxton Spite pitching the shutout in the first 44 and, minutes. And, and shutout, now, now you, you look at, uh, you know, East Ascension has some nice-looking athletes there. And it's not, you know, just running the ball up and down the field. You know, you're throwing the ball, and so you got to stop a lot of things. And then their offensive line is tremendous. Uh, they are really big, and uh, the uh, – the Gators have done an outstanding do job of not allowing that real big play. Yeah. I want to make a correction. I, I misspoke. It's Walker with the lead, 21-20 to 20 right now against Dutchtown. So a great game still over you, at Walker. I wonder if Walker's kind of scratching their head after that loss of uh, last week. Are the uh, – they did lose. Yeah. They lost well, they also have the first week to Ponchatula. And there's pass caught. And that's gonna go out of bounds. Jackson Chasson with the catch. Clock to three forty six. And I think he's shy of a first down by about seven yards. Make it third and six actually. So the ball's at the thirty two yard line. The clock has stopped. So, Gotro has had a nice run, and he's had a couple of nice passes on this drive. He has come in relief of Hudson Browning, who played most of the first half. Which one? 
Third and seven. Mitchell in motion, catches the pass. Nice move. Another nice move inside the 20 in the red zone. And getting out of bounds. No, they, they say he did not go out of bounds. I see the, I see the far side official indicating the clock is going to run. Well, it stopped uh, for the, uh, to move the chains. So we have a final score in Walker. Walker defeated Dutchtown tonight. So Dutchtown loses their first game of the season. So after tonight, it's possible if this score holds that Santa Maria will be the only unbeaten team in 5-5-A. Shotgun, Gotro, pass, complete, nice move. Cuts outside, inside to the five. Great moves by number 16, Justin Oob. He hasn't given up as the clock down to 307. Be first and goal from the one, and the shutout is in serious jeopardy right now. Big hit by number seven on defense, Spite. Offensive line doing a good job. Gotro uh, doing a good job throw, finding not necessarily the open receiver, but throwing it where he could catch it and be an athlete. And well, go that, throw on the bad snap. Work. Yep. Boy. You've seen it so much tonight. I mean, but we said it uh, a lot last year, too. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Um, and um, I, I know they made some, some adjustments, some changes. 2.24 left to go. It's just about reached the point where the win is – Probably not going to happen as a pass to the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Incomplete. That's Mitchell. So the clock stops at 2.13. A touchdown and a two-point conversion could cut it to a two-possession game, but you would need two touchdowns and at least one Two-point conversion to tie. Third and goal. Well, could have a little fade right here. That's possible. Looking right, throws the fade. Touchdown to Corey Mitchell. And EA gets on the board 23-6. to six. I would expect a two-point conversion coming right here. So a nice pass by Gotro gets the first points of the night for the Spartans. Good pass, good coverage by Spite, but a great catch. Uh, I think that the, the chart's going to say you need to go for two here, don't you? Well... That, that's going to be eight. Uh, three times eight is 24. Now you have an injury to one of the offensive linemen. So Kelvin Gray is the injured Spartan. Or, you know, uh, you got to make the two-point conversion, but you, you got to make this. You need two of them to yeah. tie. Yeah. But if you make it here, it's 23-7 to seven and – it's still a two-possession ball game. If you miss it here and it's 23-6, to six, then it's a th still a three-possession ball game. Yeah. That might be the uh, rationale right there, yeah, that, you, that you, you, still, you still have a shot potentially. If, you have a, if it's a three-possession game, there's no shot. But they're going to go for two now. Now the quarterback rolls out, throws, quick pass. Mitchell gets the two. Nice two-point play right there by the Spartans. And so our score is 23-8, to eight and we'll take a break. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick, 
GMC. Walk-ons, we live for this. Glaze, heating and air. SKR Construction. Austin Fire Systems. For their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. Twenty-three to eight. Santa Mon with the lead as you see the onside kick and a whistle prior to the kick. Jeff Porsche along with David Swacker and Troy LaBeouf. And uh, we've enjoyed giving you this rivalry from all angles tonight. Game not quite over, but if Santa Mon gets the ball, it is most likely over. Well, there's no doubt about that, but... Yep. Uh, you know, the, the, the white hat did not blow the whistle for, for play. And I'm going to bring up one point after this kick, and we'll see what happens. Something that I find very interesting, that you may find interesting. Onside kick, and that's not going to make it. Got to go 10 yards. So it's going to be Santa Mon ball. And, Coach, this is what I want to bring up right now. Last season in District 5, 5A, you had a three-way tie for the district title. That was between East Ascension, Dutchtown, and Denham Springs. After tonight, East Ascension, Dutchtown, and Denham Springs will all be 0-1 in district. And Walker, Live Oak, and Santa Ma will all be unbeaten in district. Good point there. But you know what you got to do? You got to win a few more games. Yep. And you got to play a few more games. Oh, it's not over. Our teams can go from 0 and 1 to a district title. Absolutely. But it's a lot harder. And I think that Santa Maria is making a case tonight that they might be the favorite. Well, you know, I, I'm going to say. How many turnovers tonight? Um, I don't think they have any. As you see, the Gator cheerleaders enjoying what is likely to be a win as East Ascension has called a timeout. Next week, we're going to be at Santa Monica. We're going to see if they can still keep this incredible streak going, trying to get to 7-0 and as they are going to play Denham Springs. Edie White at Donaldsonville will be the other game. Troy LaBeouf will be out there. And then in two weeks, Santa Ma at Dutchtown also going to be a good one. But going into the season, if you believed the experts, most of them said that Denham Springs was the best team in the district. They're 3-3 three and three right now. If Santa Ma can win that game, sky's the limit for that. There's no doubt. And, uh, you know, I, I, I keep thinking this and saying this. Their, their quarterback, you know, has a little bit of experience, but he is a 10th grader. Yeah. And uh, I, I would like to think that he is just going to get better and better. That's Chase Kelly with the – Yeah, you're right. There. You're right. And that was Joseph Hobby who wrestled him down. And I think the last time out is going to be called. So, now you have a team that might be the, the early favorite after week one playing the team that was expected to be the favorite in Denham Springs next week. And where do, how do you see that going, Coach? I, 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 this, this is what I, I would like to – this is what I would be telling kids. We're first in district right now. Mm-hmm. So does that mean it's over with? Absolutely not. And, so, and you know, Big O knows that. Yeah, well, everybody, you know, but the whole thing you have to do is your kids will hear all kinds of things from classmates, teachers, parents, whatever. And your kids, everybody has to be on the same page as far as we got to take this one game each week. This was one, I, I don't even know if these kids even know who, who you playing next week? Yeah, um, and this was a big game for him right here, and uh, really, really did a t tremendous job. And you have the handoff right there by Williams, which is just designed to run 40 more seconds off the clock. And Tyree's going, Jesus. Yep. They that said was, they said rough. hold on to the ball. 
So they're going to punt with about a minute left to go. They'll call, they'll run it down and then call a timeout or take the penalty. But that's going to leave East Ascension with less than a minute to score twice. And they would have to make a two-point conversion just to tie it. We, uh, we had a situation one year against the team that we scored – Three times in the last 112, I believe it was. And that's just because we had some guys that just never quit. You know, yeah. we, there was plenty of people that left the game. Uh, we, and it was a way game for us. And so once you could throw that rock, things could happen for you. Yep. And, of course, we were pretty good at that onside kick. So, you know, good things could happen for you. So. Uh, you know, it's uh, right now, you know, uh, Darnell Lee and his staff, you know, they got some work to do. You know, they, yeah. you know they, they're a little iffy on, you know, just exactly, you know, who's a quarterback going to be or who's, who's not hurt or who can play. And, um, and the same thing's going to happen uh, here for Santa Maria. This has been a tough game. Yep. It's been a very physical game. And the pressure gets it away. And Gyro was told to get that away as quickly as possible, and he did. And Gyro did exactly what you're supposed to do. Get rid One of it. step, kick, and uh, do your thing. Yep. Now, this is not out of the realm of possibility. There is still a chance that East Ascension can win this game or take it to overtime, but it's very remote, 50 seconds yeah. left. Now, next week, they're, they're playing against Walker. Walker just beat Dutchtown, so they're unbeaten in district. Yeah. So Walker looks like they're a better team than they were last year. So they're well, going to have their work cut out for them next year as well. I, I just I think East Ascension, you know, they, they, they need to find a little bit more of an identity of what they want to do offensively and defensively. But, you know, the big thing that they really have to get a lot better at is they got to uh, – do a better job of snapping that ball to that quarterback. And I'm not going to say consistent. Right. I'm going to say on every snap. Yeah. Now, Murphy makes the catch. I think that was a mistake by Corey, to Corey Sanders, who tried to jump the route and have a glory uh, pick six right there. And instead of just wrapping him up after the catch, and he just gave up an extra 30 yards. So now 40 seconds left. And now it's interesting. More interesting than it was 30 seconds ago, Coach. No timeouts. Shotgun, quick pass. And that time, Sanders does the right thing and keeps him in front of him. And the clock is going to run. I don't know. I, that, he did a good job of uh, keeping him in bounds, at least. <laughs> and so, in a moment when the game ends, we're going to have a interview with the winning coach who – most likely will be Coach Oliver. Has the clock running, 14-13. In under pressure, gets away. And we'll just take it out of bounds. Pushed out, escorted by Cohen Rock, number 90. So now six seconds left. And so maybe one more play, and then Santa will be victorious and move to 6-0 and on the season for sure. Not the shutout that they were hoping for maybe about 10 minutes ago, but still, this was this was a statement tonight, Coach. I, I'm going to tell you, I've been uh, pleasantly surprised at the Gator defense. Seems to have been very consistent on everything that they're doing. So five seconds, pass, up for grabs, intercepted. And that's number 36, Caleb Ricks. And that will end it at, on his second interception of the night. And so our final score is 23 to 8. And so a victory for Santa Ma, which will move them to 6 and 0 on the season, 1 and 0 in district. East Ascension will fall to 1 and 5 on the season and 0 and 1 in district. And again, next week we will be at Santa Ma at the pit for Denham Springs at Santa Ma. 
And East Ascension will go to Walker next week and try to fix things and get back on the winning track. You saw the two coaches right there, and we're just waiting for a moment while Coach Oliver congratulates everybody and then we'll meet Troy LaBeouf on the field for the post-game interview as I see Andre and Troy out there at midfield just waiting. And so I think we're moments away. He's just making sure everybody, everybody's there and everybody shakes hands and everybody does right, Coach. And uh, he's proud of his kids. That's, uh, you know, all the coaches. I mean, this, uh, this is a strong rivalry right here, and I'm just telling you, it's all tied up now. And, uh, you know, sometimes you get a few little tempers and stuff like this, but everybody's playing hard. And we have the interview now, so let's go to the field. Down on the field with victorious head coach David Oliver. Coach, defense did it tonight, man. Offense did enough. You got your quarterback back this week, but I thought the offensive line. Talk about the offense first. I go to the yeah, defense yeah, second. I'm going to let Coach Thomas talk about that great defensive effort. But, look, there was considerable conversation amongst the Gonzales Street Committee about whether our non-district schedule got us ready for district. I believe we've answered that question. I think you did, Coach. Uh, offensively, talk about your offensive line. I thought they gave a lot of protection to Babbitt. They opened some holes for your running game as well. They did, and we did just enough. Uh, great special teams. Look, we just play hard. We downed the ball twice at the one. One ended up being a touchdown. So, you know, our kids play hard, and I'm proud of it. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. The series is now tied up. Uh, it'll just build up to next year. Yep. Now I'm going to defensive right. coordinator, Dwayne Thomasy. Tough team to prepare for, obviously. You give up a lot of weight up front against against these guys. Great game plan. Ricks gets his second interception of the game. We couldn't pick a player of the game. I think it's the whole defense. Well, you know, this is one of those games, and it always is, an arrival game. It's bring your own guts. You know, that's what type of game it is. And, you know, we talk about populating the ball with effort. You know, we're going to give up some size. You know, we, we're from Santa Maria, Louisiana. You know, but one thing that we have is heart. We have determination. And, and I was proud of our kids because, you know, they brought their own guts. They populated the football. We made tackles whenever we needed to. And, and we, and that's a good football team over there. Very good football team. A lot of people came out to watch it tonight. It's great for this community. This week is over finally, right? Yeah, thank God. You know, it, it's, uh, it's, they're tough to prepare. It's a, it's, there's a lot of festivities, a lot of pageantry that goes on in this type of game. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you, 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 you're happy when it's over. But uh, we're excited. We're excited to be at a good football team. Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coach Dwayne Thomas, the defensive coordinator, Victoria Santa Maria Gators here on Spartan Field. We'll go to a break and we'll come back. The booth will wrap it up after this timeout. Looking for an extraordinary education opportunity? Introducing Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where you can earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree from River Parish's Community College at the same time. Experience the best of both worlds as high school seamlessly blends with college coursework in a rigorous yet supportive program. Yet stay connected to your home high school through clubs, organizations, and sports. And here's the best part. Students pay no tuition or textbook costs. Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where your future begins today. They finished up, huh? So you see the end of the alma mater from East Ascension on a night where Santa Maria comes up victorious by a final score of 23-8. to eight. And the best rivalry in Ascension Parish, maybe the best rivalry in the state of Louisiana, is now dead even. 22-22. And Coach O, big old David Oliver now joins... Coach Morrow and another coach at seven victories in this series. Well, welcome uh, to the club, and I'm going to tell you what, it's a hard profession, but uh, Coach Oliver and his uh, coaches and his players really did a very good job today against a physical, maybe in some regards, maybe a more physical team than Santa Maria. Usually they're bigger. Maybe uh, some are stronger, I don't know. But I do know this, that uh, they really played hard and uh, very enjoyable uh, to watch this game. And that will do it for our broadcast tonight. We'll see Santa Maria next week at the pit against Denham Springs, or you can watch Edie White and Donaldsonville. That's going to do it. I'm Jeff Porsche. Thanks to Coach Swack. Thanks to Troy LaBeouf. 
and our entire crew for a great broadcast tonight. We'll see you next week. Our final score, Santa Monica 23, EA 8. You've been watching the Rev Game of the Week.